Texas. Each year, you get one shot, one opportunity to say you beat the Sooners and you blow it. Is this year going to be any different? The answer? No. They say this year they're ready. Egos are heavy. They're dressed for Halloween already. Burnt orange so ugly. Bevo's nervous because he knows we got a butcher ready to make him steaks. But the Texas fans keep forgetting. So they roll down. The orange crowd yells so loud. They open their mouths. Oklahoma sucks. Comes out outspoken now. Everybody's gloating how when the clock runs out. Crimson streaks all the time. Texas is so sad to see over you and the big D horns for the demon. We got Jason White soon to hold the Heisman Trophy. Hope you fucked up Perkins. He knows he'll score a TD. Bizarre killer defense. It's so sick that we know you can't score any points. And we're going to be Red River Chips again. Yo, the Crimson and Cream. And you can plan your trip to the Weed Eater Bowl. Because you're going to lose again to the Sooners from all you. We own you and we ain't ever letting go. Because each year you're one shot for not the cop. Your opportunity comes once in a season And you gotta lose again to the Sooners For all you, we own you and we ain't ever letting go Cause each year you want shots for not at the Cotton Bowl Your opportunity comes once in a season It's a new game, but the winner will be the same I need a hint, it's okay, L-A-H-O-M-A And this year you won't have Chris Sims to blame So you'll know that it's really your whole team that's lame Sooner fans will ride the scooter back north Though so hyper, driven by our coach He's the guy in the white blazer, screaming boomer sooner. It's never been louder because we know that OU's gonna stay at the number one spot. A Big 12 title side. Sooner's got a lot of games left, but afraid they're not. To formulate a plot for an eighth title shot. But he knows what kind of odds you got. So long, horns, take your best shot. Feel the pressure pop. And remember, it's the only opportunity that you got. And you're gonna lose again to the Sooners from all you. We own you, and we ain't ever letting go. Cause each year you're one shot. For not at the Cotton Bowl, your opportunity comes once in a season, and you're gonna lose again to the Sooners. For all you, we own you, and we ain't ever letting go. Cause each year you're one shot for not at the Cotton Bowl, your opportunity will come again next season. That's right, Horns. There's always next year. Well, don't get your hopes up. Word. Ninth edition of OU Texas. Enjoy it for Mark, for Tracy, for Jack. I'm Tyler. We'll see you after the game. to think about responsibility. It's a good day to ask yourself if you're willing to accept the responsibility you have to protect this team and this school and this town. A rivalry which not only brings renewed hope of a championship to the victors, but also much more. Gentlemen, the hopes and dreams of an entire town are riding on your shoulders. You may never matter more than you do right now. It's time. Recent history has displayed Oklahoma's dominance over Texas. Four straight victories, four consecutive nightmares. But how will this season's drama unfold? Make no mistake about it, gentlemen. We are in the business of winning. Can the Longhorns finally make a statement in the Red River Shootout? Or will the Sooners again hold the upper hand in the quest for a title? Can you give me a great effort and just a little bit more? Can we be perfect? So let's take care of it! This is no movie, but it is made for TV. Here at the State Fair of Texas, the Sooner fans and the Longhorn fans are ready to go head-to-head -head for the 99th time here at the Cotton Bowl. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor as we take our act on the road. This game is so important. So many people talk about, well, I want to play off, I want to play off. Guess what? We have one. It starts right here today. Texas needs a big win. Ooh, baby, John. The tech, or the pressure is on Texas today. And for them to get the win, they have to be physical. They have to get it done up front and right now. One of the guys helping them to be able to do that is Cedric Benson, the nation's leading rusher, 185 yards per game. They got to come out and feed the 
force the ball. It gets done today with Texas in the running game. Big guy's ready to go. Yeah. He, he just took Texas, by the way. Hey, let me tell you about Oklahoma. How does Oklahoma continue the dominance? They must run the football. Adrian Peterson out of Texas. They lost the recruit. He went to OU. He's really good. And when you talk about Adrian Peterson, they've got to run the ball or else Jason White usually struggles. No touchdowns, five interceptions last year in those two games where they lost because they just couldn't run the ball. This is game one of our doubleheader as well. We have games at 3.30, including USC against yeah. Cal. Bevo is ready. Are you? We're coming back after this. <laughs> Texas versus Oklahoma. Through the years, this Red River rivalry has helped define what college football is all about. The pageantry, the tradition, the competition. The coaches and players who have made their mark in this game reads like a who's who of the sport. Men whose performances on the field have made them legends for generations to come. Today, a new generation of men look to make their own mark between the hashes of the Cotton Bowl. The stage is set, the lines drawn. Two top five teams collide. Conference and national title implications abound. For those who answer the call to greatness, a place in history surely awaits. They're four and oh, they're ranked number five in the country. This is Texas. Spotlight game presented by ADT from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The unbeaten Longhorns and the number two team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners, who have won this battle the last four times. What a scene. Maybe one of the best anywhere in sport. Half crimson, half burn orange, a sold out Cotton Bowl. Welcome to Dallas, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. This is the 99th version of the Red River Shootout. How important is it? Well, if you want to win a national championship, you better get to the Big 12 championship. If you want to get there, you better win this one. That's how important it is. Texas has been unable, Bob, to do that the last four years. Oklahoma's had their number a little bit. Pressure on the Longhorns. If they're to snap the losing skid, how do they do it? Well, Mac Brown says we've been getting ready for this game since March. We've gotten tougher and we've gotten more physical. And how do you do that? Well, you run the football. They run the football by two guys have to play well today. They've committed to quarterback Vince Young. He almost ran for a thousand yards last year. And then Cedric Benson. He's got to play big today. This team leads the nation in rushing the ball. That's how you get more physical. Oklahoma good at defending the run and they know they're going to have to do that today. They come in as the number two team the higher ranked team for the fourth straight year. They've got that Bob Stoop swagger, and why shouldn't they? They've got all kinds of talent back, including last year's Heisman Trophy winner. Well, you're right. They've got 18 starters back from a team that played in the national championship game, including Jason White. Five offensive linemen are back, and his top five wide receivers are back. This may be their last best chance at a national championship because 16 seniors graduate, so this may be not only a best chance to beat Texas, but they may have something bigger in mind down the road. They talk in terms of national championships. They know they've got to go through Texas to get there. Swanee will talk about the Oklahoma backfield when we come back. Somewhere out in that massive humanity taking his life in his own hands, the third member of our team, Lynn Swan. Swan. Thank, thank you, Brad. The big question at the start of this ball game is who will start at running back for Oklahoma? It could be Kawan Jones or it could be Adrian Peterson. And why not Peterson? Because Peterson has been nothing short of spectacular. He even garnered the cover of Sports Illustrated this week. And he's big, he's strong, he's fast, elusive, but the one skill set he doesn't have is experience, and that's where Kiwan Jones comes in. He's played in this big ball game, he understands the pressure, and he can pick up the blitz. I talked to the offensive coordinator, the running backs coach, and Bob Stoops. They say Kiwan Jones will start for them, but look for Adrian Peterson to come to this ball game early. And maybe by the end of the ball game, we'll find out if Adrian is better than Cedric. Brad? All right, Swanee. We've had. 
A little bit of light rain this morning. Temperature in the mid 60s. We could have more rain before it's over. But right now, it's a fast track. 27th time in the 99 year history of this game that both teams are undefeated. Texas won the toss and deferred. They'll kick to Oklahoma. And it's Mark Bradley, five yards deep. He'll bring it for the Sooners. Only got to about the 16 yard line. That's confidence when you take that ball five yards in and run it out. So that's where the Oklahoma offense will go to work. Led by their Heisman Trophy quarterback of a year ago, Jason White, who threw 40 touchdown passes last year, only 10 interceptions. His worst two games were the last two of the season, the Big 12 title game and the BCS title game. There's his numbers, and they're fairly comparable to last year. Yeah, but not throwing as much because they don't have to throw as much. More balance with the running game. As Lynn said, Keewan Jones in the backfield with Runnels the fullback, and he'll get the call on first down. And he's got an opening. And Keewan wants to keep his job and stay out there. And he picks up eight yards on the first carry of the ball game behind these big eaters up front. Sims, Shishan, Carter, Joseph, and Jamal Brown may be the best right tackle in football. Kiwan starts, Runnels his lead man, Moses is the tight end. The wide receivers, as Bob said, they can all kill you. Clayton, one of the best in college football. Wilson, Peoples, and Brandon Jones. The guy you didn't see there was Mark Bradley. He's another wide receiver that comes in. They've got five guys that can play. They'll work from the shotgun on second and short, and they come up throwing, and it got a first down, and they've to Travis Wilson, and he broke the tackle skated up the sideline and got it to about the 33 yard line so first first down of the ball game against this Texas defense up front Robinson Dibbles Rod Wright back from an injury and Tim Crowder the linebackers look like this Paul Harris and one of the best in all of football in Derek Johnson and the secondary is a good one Griffin Huff Giger and Terrell Brown first down Oklahoma the Sooners at their own 33 yard line High backfield again with Kiwan Jones, the tailback. Play action on a bootleg and on the throw, and it's out to run as a fullback, and he's going to be close to another first down. Now, this is something that Oklahoma did not have in their arsenal the last two years because Jason White couldn't get outside the pocket. The little bootleg means that his knees are much better. No braces on the knees this year. Of course, the left knee in 01, the right knee in 02, and as you can look, no braces anymore. Stronger than he's been in a long, long time. And obviously has the confidence of the season he had a year ago behind him for head coach Bob Stoops in his sixth year and looking for his 60th win in Norman. And in this case, he's looking for it in Dallas. First and 10, Oklahoma. That's Clayton in motion. Here's the stretch play to Keewan Jones. And he has met in the hole only about a yard gain. Roderick Wright in on the tackle. Let's get an update. The Big Ten. An even bigger game here in the Big 12. Second down and eight. High snap. White throws it out to Clayton. He's got a blocker in front of him. Got across midfield and then got tattooed as he crossed midfield by Cedric Griffin. A pickup of six. It'll bring up the first third down of the ball game. Brad, the opening drive of any game is big, but I think in this game, because Oklahoma has dominated this game in the last four years, and they've scored early. Texas wants to stop them early, and I think that's a key drive, the opening drive of the game. So obviously the biggest third down, the only third down so far here in the first three minutes. Two tight ends set for the Sooners. Play action. White wants to loft one out there and in and out of the hands and intercepted. Picked off. Texas gets the stop. Michael Huff coming the other way. And the Longhorns have the ball. The old tip drill there for Michael Huff. Willie Roberts got a hand on it, but not enough of a hand. Well, he had it, and he had the receiver open. Here's the tight end. Watch as he's going to come down after a play fake. Oklahoma has been outstanding. Right there, he was open. They've been outstanding on third count down conversions. That time he had it. They don't go to their tight end that often. Cedric Benson got two on the first carry 
for Texas as they come out under their sophomore quarterback Vince Young who played a good portion of this game last year and ever since that time he's been the starter dangerous probably more as a runner than a passer I, I think you're right and the thing that he brings that I think that might scare a little bit of Oklahoma is his mobility a quarterback with mobility has done very well in past against this Oklahoma defense both wide receivers to the right but it's Benson straight up the middle again he got cut down hit the backfield Falls across the 50 to the 49. Lance Mitchell made the stop. Up front, the big eaters for Texas are Blaylock and Allen, Glenn, Stuttered, and Scott. The backs and receivers, we've talked about Cedric Benson. He's carried it twice. Will Matthews is fullback. Thomas, one of two tight ends that'll play a lot. Carter and Jeffrey are the wide receivers. The other tight end is Bo Scape, and he's been around six years. Yeah, if there's a weakness on this offense, they graduated their top three wide receivers. They're young wide receivers. They're young, and they're, they're not quite up to speed with the ones from Oklahoma. Third down and four. That's Thomas, the tight end in motion. Vince Young wants to throw. Does, and it's knocked down by Lance Mitchell. And a penalty marker down. They were going to Bo Scape, the tight end, and it looks like Lance got there a little bit too early. Well, their tight ends are definitely their go-to guys because of the, the receivers. That'll be a first down. As you mentioned, both Thomas and Scaife are guys that they want to go to. Just had that back arm, I think, hooked around the, him a the little left, bit. The left arm was good. It was the right arm that got in trouble. So the first, first down for Texas is at the Oklahoma 45, courtesy of the penalty. They split the tight end out to the top of your screen, both wide outs to the near side, and it's Young out of the shotgun on the give. He'll keep it this time, fake it to Benson, and now here he is in the open field. And that's what Bob was talking about, the mobility of Vince Young. He rips off a 14-yard gallop and out of bounds. Benson, he faked it to Benson, and Benson just got hammered. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to see Benson and the linebacker hits him Bang, right there. Right there. <laughs> they go back to the visit. Well, Benson go back and say, well, that was a good run. <laughs> and Benson goes, yeah, you should have seen what I did for you. Down to the 31. Texas has something going after the Michael Huff interception. First down from the gun. This time Benson does get the call, and he stopped for no gain. Oklahoma defensively. They are sixth in the country against the rush. Up front, Jackson and Cody, two of the better defensive ends. They're not as strong in the middle with Magruder and Pendleton as they have been in past seasons. Alexander and Ingram. Mitchell is back from the knee injury. He's the leader in the middle. Antonio Perkins, Dante Nicholson, Rodney Poole, and Eric Bassey is a very excellent secondary. Yeah, this, the offense, there's a defensive coordinator, Venables. The offense for Oklahoma is good. The special teams are as good as ever. The defense is not quite as good as it has been in years past. Young play fake. Wants to throw behind his intended receiver, the tight end, and he paid the price. Scape took a shot from Rodney Poole. Yeah. And they're already hitting out there, Grease. Yeah. You, you, well, that's always the case in this game. And that's why uh, Mac Brown told us, he says, we want him to be more physical. But the thing he also told us, he says, you know, this is a blue-collar offense. We're going to run a lot. See, there's the offense. That's the passing game that's not quite as sharp. That's why they need to run the football. Vince Young is not a, a, an experienced passer. He throws the ball down the field better than he does those short ones. And we're going to have a timeout. We'll take one as well. Nine minutes, 53 seconds as Oklahoma takes a timeout here in the first quarter. Texas got an interception, the first big play of the ball game, and we'll see if they can capitalize on third down when we come back. Texas, after the interception, has a third and ten. Bob, you wonder if they'll play it conservatively here and maybe a quarterback draw, or will they try to pick it up? Uh, it's a blue collar, and they're not going to do what you want them to do. This is not their strength, picking up third and longs. There's the quarterback keeper, and he slips and goes down. He actually lost yardage, and that probably took him out of field goal range. Dante Nicholson with a tackle from the secondary. I think if they would have picked up like four or five yards, Mac Brown may have gone for it on fourth and five. I think now they may just punt it away. 
It was going to be a quarterback draw. For then he sure. saw the block from Benson and yeah. tried to get around, and Nicholson will have none of it. It was a quarterback draw sweep, and now they're just going to punt it and, and try to get Oklahoma backed up in their own territory. Richmond McGee is the punter. That guy is dangerous. <laughs> Antonio Perkins already has eight punt returns for touchdowns in his career. You know they don't want him to touch it. Yeah. And McGee will try to get this thing away from him. High kick. Perkins gets out of the way, but it bounces inside the five. Great kick, great coverage. Did he get a good bounce on that one? He sure did. I thought he had kicked it too far and hit on the two-yard line with a little uh, backspin. So now Oklahoma deep in its own territory at the four in an important game. How important, we ask Bob Stoops, is this game? This is another game and a stepping stone to achieving a championship. Uh, beating Texas isn't, uh, isn't, you know, uh, does is a part of our season. That's it. Uh, it's a part and a step towards a championship, and that's what we're after. And uh, Big 12 championships and national championships, and, and so uh, each year it's it's a building block and a step towards that. And I think sometimes that's what separates Bob Stoops from some other coaches. Adrian Peterson, the freshman, in the clear, across the 20, down the sideline, trying to break a tackle. He's all the way to the 48-yard line. Michael Huff saved a touchdown, and there's the guy they call A.D., because he can run all day. 44 yards, the first time he touches it. I guess he's not overwhelmed by the cotton ball. <laughs> I guess not. The top of your screen, this is just, this is just poor. Um, there's no force on the outside. Everybody went to the inside, and Peterson just bounced it outside. That was just very poor defense. Harris, the, the middle linebacker, got caught inside on the bounce out. That ties the longest run allowed by Texas so far this year. First down, now great field position. End around now coming. Mark Clayton trying to find some room to run, and Texas waiting for him. He lost a yard. Brian Robinson kept his ground, and he helped force that play. I'm going to go back to what Bob Stoops was talking about in that little uh, sound clip that we just played. I think having won the last four games, he can afford to look at this game and then and then bounce ahead down the road. This is a one on one on a, a, a stepping stone to a, maybe a national championship. I don't think Mac Brown has that luxury. Losing four games, he's got a point to this one. Second down at 11. They toss it to Peterson. He got a nice block from Bradley and looking for the corner. Breaks a tackle. Keep his feet and the ball came loose at the end of the run. Let's see now. Couldn't tell if it went out of bounds or not. It does, it, they're not acting like it went out of bounds. Field judge and the line judge are going to make this call. And apparently he was down well, at the end of the run. Yeah, if there wasn't, if there is no call, then it must be uh, Oklahoma's ball. They talk a lot about the talent of the wide receivers of Oklahoma, and they are talented as receivers, but one thing they do as good as anybody in the country, they will hit you. Watch the block from number one on the toss as Peterson comes this way. Good point. Not only that, but Wilson gets in the way there. Tough to bring down. Looked like his knee was already down yeah. inside before he that, fumbled. That's what they call it, I think. Yeah, it's down He's there. Down. But he is then not easy to bring down. Peterson 6'2 and 210. Here he comes again. There he goes again. First down and more. Knocked out of bounds and a flag for a late hit, I think, as he got to the 33 yard line. Picked up 10 yards on third and short, and they'll probably pick up 15 more. It wasn't the biggest hit as they got to the sideline. This is the previous play. Uh, he was down. Both his, his knees were down before. Knee, That's the previous his knee, play. His knee was down on the previous play. Here's the call. Offense. So it's a holding call, not a late hit. And that'll make it third down again. Back out at the 48-yard line. A lot of the damage that, that Oklahoma is doing in the running game has been outside. Outside the tackles. And the offensive line doing a nice job. And Peterson bounced out a couple of times and did a very nice job of gaining yard. Texas has got to shore up their outside support. So instead of first down at the 33, it's third down and six back at the 48. 
Now let's see if White will throw here. They bring the tight end in motion. Has time. Throws high and incomplete. Flag flies in from the secondary. Way back about 15 yards away from the play. So Hal Dowden, our referee, will give us an indication if this one's going against Texas. As you would expect with Vince Carter clapping his hands, that's going to be the call. goes right back the other way back to back holding penalties one against each team so this moves it to the 38 yard line as I mentioned the flag came in way back in the secondary Bradley working against Cedric Griffin yeah. and I think that's where it came the flag came from behind those guys he was the slot receiver and the field judge back in the middle of the uh, field behind the defense is looking only at the inside slot receiver and he's the one that called it so now it's first down Oklahoma remember they were backed up inside their own five but Adrian Peterson on his first carry went 44 yards and now here they are in Longhorn territory for the second time today at the 38 and they'll work out of the gun again he Jones flanking Jason White who drops the throw Fires near side. Got his man. Lifted up and out of bounds. Incomplete. Yeah, unlike the pro rule, when the receiver goes up and he's pushed out of bounds, he is out of bounds. Nothing like the pro rule was if you would have come down in bounds, it would have been a good catch. Let's check in with Lynn. Well, Bob and Brad, just a little subtlety in the ball game. I talked about it a little bit at the opening. You notice that in that first third down situation, it was number 20, Kiwan Jones, that came into the ball game, as well as Adrian Peterson has been playing. In passing situations, he is not as comfortable with pass protection. So when they're in the shotgun, 20 is going to be back on the quarterback side. He's there right now. And that's where the quarterback wants him, too. <laughs> Second and 10. He'll give it to him this time. Inside handoff, and he's cartwheeled for a pickup of about two. Derek Johnson, the linebacker, with a hit. See the respect that the Texas defense has for Kiwan Jones. Oklahoma's running game last year, they didn't have a two-headed weapon like Kiwan Jones and Adrian Peterson. And that was part of their problem when it came down to nitty-gritty time at the end of the season. Yeah, they're running it a lot better, not throwing it as well, but the total offense is better. Third down and eight. Four wide receivers for White. Here comes a blitz. White steps up, took a hit. Almost intercepted again by Michael Huff. Had it in his hands and dropped it. And White took a big hit. Texas hasn't blitzed much this year, but they brought the heat that time, Bob. They did. It was a blitz, and we were expecting some of this. Oklahoma said we haven't seen much blitzing. Here's a linebacker watching straight inside. We haven't seen much blitzing out of Texas, but we know it's coming. And Clayton does a nice job of preventing an interception, the second one for Huff. Blake Ferguson now comes into punt. And Aaron Ross back deep. And he might take a penalty here. Now, now try to back up five yards. But of course, Texas has the opportunity to say, you know what, uh, we decline. Just do it where you're standing right now. You know what? I, I'd back him up with, with, the, with the history of Bob Stoops knowing that he may do some gimmicks. Yep. I'd, I'd feel safe and just back him up. All right, our official's mic is not working properly, but they'll walk it off. It's a delay of game. They back it up, as Bob said they should, back to the 41-yard line. Now that takes away. I don't know if he was going to run a fake punt on fourth and seven, but he's certainly not going to. Especially after 13. you took a delay of game, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now Ferguson to kick. See how this one lands inside the five, but Oklahoma couldn't get Bradley down there that, to turn around. That, that punt hit about the same spot as the other punt, but went on in the end zone. 
Sooner fans all decked out in the upside down horns. We're scoreless here in Dallas. Get the football back. Barry Switzer. Come on, coach. I know it's early, but nothing to yawn about. Benson stopped for no gain again. So much like past seasons, at least so far, Cedric Benson has not been able to cut anything loose. He's got four carries and only six yards, and he has struggled against Oklahoma in the past. And Magruder, one of those two inside defensive tackles that you said had to play well today, got around his man and got in there and made the play. They're missing Tommy, Tommy Harris, uh, the... Um, Lombardi winner. He won the Lombardi. I keep mixing all those things up. Yeah. And now they're also missing uh, the board check. So there are two inside tackles from last year. Two pretty good ones had to be replaced. Second down and ten from the eye. Play action. Young comes up throwing. Gets it out. Complete across the 25 to his fullback, Will Matthews. And Rodney Poole makes the tackle. As we mentioned, Mac Brown has beaten Bob Stoops before, but not in the last four years. And we talked to him about that pressure. I don't feel like it's pressure. Pressure means your family's hungry. Pressure means somebody that you love is sick. Uh, but this is about pride, and, and I haven't felt really good about myself walking off this field for the last couple of years. And Mac has taken all the pressure on his shoulders again this week, saying it's my fault. I haven't coached as well as Bob Stoops has. Here's Benson, first down, and then some out to the 40-yard line. So he finally breaks one off a 13-yard run. That's his best carry of the day. Third and medium. You're going to see Texas not putting the ball up. Here it is right here. He's just going to get the ball and run, run to the left side. They don't want to throw when you want them to throw. Watch this. Right through that opening. Nice job of blocking the left side of the offensive line. Uh, first down out at the 40. Cedric Benson again. Straight ahead, got four, almost five. We mentioned his games against Oklahoma have been his biggest struggles. He's only averaged 2.2 yards a carry in his previous matchups with the Sooners. So <laughs> that was his longest run ever, the 13-yarder a couple of plays ago. And I, I, if he were up here, he'd probably say there was a lot of running backs that, that had struggled, yet, yeah. <laughs> that struggled going against the Oklahoma defense. We're under four and a half minutes, a sold-out Cotton Bowl. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew. And the 99th version of the Red River shootout. No score. Third down, a second down and five. Young now, out to the 48. He'll be about two yards short. So another big third down coming up. Rufus Alexander, the outside linebacker, made the stop. Young is 6'5", 225, and he can really run when he gets in the open field. He can run. He's got a little bit of a, a quirky throwing motion. He drops it down and throws either three quarters or side on it. And it's surprising as much as he runs that in this conference anyway, he's the uh, only the third most rushing quarterback. And Bob mentioned earlier that Reggie McNeil of AM and Brad Smith of Missouri are the two quarterbacks that gave this Oklahoma defense fits in the past couple seasons. This is a first down run again. Cedric Benson. And now the Longhorn fans are coming to life. The right side of that offensive line, Allen, Blaylock, Thomas, the tight end, do a nice job of just walling everybody off and allowing Benson to find a hole. Second run for a first down on this drive for Benson. And he's got it down to the 46 of the Sooners. Thomas in motion. Young, the straight drop to throw. Wanted his tight end. Now he'll take off on his own. Gets it down inside the 40, down to the 39-yard line. Got six or seven on the carry. ABC's Desperate Housewives is being called TV's best new series and a great new guilty pleasure. Don't miss an all-new Desperate Housewives Sunday at 9, 8 Central, only on ABC. Terry Hatcher's probably watching this game. It's big. It's a big game. What'd you think of Desperate Housewives? I liked it. I, you know, I, we do all these promos, and then I go home and I say, well, what time is that on? Where is it? You know, and then, so I found it. It's not like the ladies in my neighborhood. <laughs> I think Second down, a long three. Here comes a blitz, and down goes Young. Dan Cody 
just threw away the would-be blocker and comes up with a big hit. He slides to the inside and just gets away from everybody. Here he is here, watches, he's gonna slide to the inside. Moves inside, takes a hard, you know what that is? He's got the snap count down. Because when you move that quick and the ball gets snapped, now, now what Young has to do is vary his snap count. Go on some quick counts and go on some long counts. He's lucky he ha held on that I was going to say, he is lucky he didn't fumble. Cody's 17th career sack forces a third and eight. Young now on the move and throws incomplete a one-hopper intended for Lima Swede. So another opportunity for Texas in Oklahoma territory comes up empty courtesy of Dan Cody. Now this is one thing that you're not going to have against this Oklahoma defense is a lot of time on third down because they will come after you. Antonio Perkins, there's the numbers I mentioned earlier. Eight career punt returns for touchdown. Three of those in one game last year against UCLA. I'd be surprised if he gets the return one in this game. This, this ball's got to be going left or right out of bounds. Richmond McGee knows that. The punter, he kicks it a mile in the air, but it might be returnable. Nope, it's got to take the fair catch at the last second because Texas did a nice job getting down there. Only a 29-yard punt, but they kept him from returning it. A minute 36 remaining first quarter. We're scoreless in the Cotton Bowl. Scoreless in Dallas with a minute 36 to go in the first quarter. And you can interact on Enhanced TV right now at ESPN.com. Out come the Sooners. Not great field position with which to work. There's a guy that can get them some good field position in a hurry if they get it in his hands. Mark Clayton, who last year caught 83 passes for over 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns. He's a big timer. Play action. Here's a throw. Completes. And it's the Runnels, the fullback. He's a good receiver. And he's got it across the 20 out to about the 22-yard line. An excellent receiver, uh, Brad. He, that's his 23rd, 24th career catch. And he's got four touchdowns. This is a kid that can block and can receive. You know, that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of fullbacks that the NFL is looking for right yep, there. Especially when they're two, almost 250. He stays in there as the front man for Adrian Peterson. On second down and a long two. Here's the toss. Peterson tucks that ball away and sees a lot of white jerseys coming. That's nice true. job by Aaron Harris, the middle linebacker, a loss to five. Let's take a look at our Pontiac high performance drive summary. So far in the ball game, Oklahoma had to start at their own 16. They were intercepted, and they had to start after a great punt of their own four and had to punt. And now they had to start this one at their own 15, and they've come up with a third down and long seven. I think that's key right there. All three Oklahoma possessions have started inside their 15, 16-yard line. Kiwa Jones, as Swanee said would happen in shotgun, comes back in to flank Jason White. Third down and long. Blitz coming. Passes in and out of the hands of Mark Clayton incomplete. Nice job defensively by Michael Huff again. Number seven's been around the football today, including an interception and another near interception. Well, this, this uh, Texas defense is doing well. They came into the game with only three sacks in the four games they played this year, but that's because they haven't been blitzing. Yep. They're getting after it today. Oklahoma came in as the best third down team in the Big 12, and they're 0 for 3 in third down conversions today. Blake Ferguson might feel a little pressure here from the Longhorns. They should get great field position. Let's see if they try to come after the punter. And they got close. He got it out of there, though, and Harris has to let it bounce, but it's still going to be great field position again as the Longhorns are winning the battle of field position. Penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage on the far side. And it's against Oklahoma. I think you decline that one. I would say so. We like it. That's we what got Max it. says. Yeah. Illegal formation. Penalty is declined. First down. 
the end of the first quarter. That first down will indeed start the second quarter. They won't have to switch too far on the ends. No score. The Sooners and the Longhorn fans in full force. Our presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC station. This is Big Texas talking to you. Welcome back to the 9 and 9th meeting between the Texas Longhorns and the Oklahoma Sooners. And now back to Brad, Bob, and Lynn. All right, Big Tex. <laughs> Thanks, fella. You know, he had a little bit of an extreme makeover body edition I heard over the offseason and uh, cost quite a bit of money. I don't know if it was just Botox or if they did a little bit of everything, but he looks dang good. He does. First down at the 44. End around coming. Tony Jeffrey. Jeffrey got the corner, knocked out of bounds. And he'll go out after a pickup of about eight. Let's check in with Swanee. Swanee's are starting to rain out there. Well, it's starting to rain, rain a little bit sideways just as we came out of that mm -hmm. break. Uh, a little heavier rain cloud came over. The rain started coming down. The wind picked up. A little concerned for a Texas team. You come out of the huddle. You think everything's okay. You might have a pass play call. Yep. And then you run right into it just a little more wind, a little more bad conditions. I used to hate that. We'd be in a... We'd be in a commercial timeout when I was playing, and I had a pass on, and then it would start raining just as we broke the huddle. Let's get this, get, get the commercial over. Let's go. This time they go to Benson and fake the end around to Jeff Green. It's going to be a loss of about a yard. A big third down coming up after we check in one more time. On showdown Saturday, the Gophers and the Wolverines in a big one. Here they come. Blitz from the corner coming, handoff inside. And a loss again on the play. Young was going to hand it off, kept it, and Oklahoma swallowed him up. Magruder inside and Bassey from the secondary. You saw the two corners that were a bump and run slide in from the outside at the last minute. Oklahoma does that so well. But the Texas says, we will fool them with that. We're not going to throw the ball. Perkins back deep. Texas has gained 24 yards. This is hidden yards on the exchange of punts. And they're... Their average starting position has been like 24 yards better than Oklahoma's. Well, all of Texas punts have come from either midfield or even on the OU side of things. And this one heading to the corner. Perkins trying to track it down. The over-the-shoulder catch. They'll take it at the eight. Not a lot of room to work. Texas does a nice job. He's swallowed up after about a five-yard return. It's a very good kick and a very good coverage. Get him over there in the corner and then let him try and return it. So again, the battle of field position won by the Texas punter. Longhorn fans are loving it. We're still scoreless here in Dallas. That's just not something you wear every day. It's got to be a special game. Oklahoma from its own 13-yard line. Their average starting field position has been horrible. Jason White, quick throw out and incomplete. Jawan Rankins trying to find a handle and couldn't. Just a poor throw by Jason White. You've got to give your receiver a chance. He would have picked up five or six yards at least. Jason White's only hit one of his last six. And he's uh, normally a, a very good with his accuracy uh, coming in over 70%. This year, nine touchdowns, only one interception. He bootlegs on second and ten, and out complete. Close to the 20-yard line is Mark Clayton, but they won't let Clayton loose. Eric Hall does a nice job. Now Clayton comes up limping as he heads to the OU sideline. I like that little sprint out. It's something new as we take a look at Clayton. And he looks to be all right. But I like that, getting the quarterback, especially Jason White, where in the past, he was a sitting duck. Right. But now they can get him outside the pocket. Causes more problems for the defensive coordinator. Most of the total yardage came on the one run by Adrian Peterson. Only 39 passing for the Heisman Trophy winner. And you know that Derek Johnson and company are going to be hunting Sooners on this one. Third down and four. White. Flushed from the pocket. Oh, and knocked away from behind. Texas has it. And it's Derek Johnson's seventh forced fumble of the year. 
He's done that. He did it last week. Knocked the ball loose on the same type of play. Running to the sideline. Got his arm in around the carrier and knocked the ball loose. Seven forced fumbles. Can you believe that? This is only the fifth game of the season. Watch this play. This is something... They worked on in practice. Watch him come around the back. That's just good coaching. Derek Johnson, Greg Robinson, the new defensive coordinator, is trying to get him to be more aggressive. That's just a super play by an outstanding player. That's one of the best defensive plays you'll ever see. And Bob said it. He did the same exact thing against Baylor last week that forced a turnover and gave the ball to Texas. He's done it here again today. So he's got seven forced fumbles in five games. Four and a half games. His older brother, Dwight, is about six years older, played at Baylor and then with the Philadelphia Eagles. He said, the hardest time I used to have was when Derek was about three years old. We'd go to church. Mom was in the choir. She put me in charge of him. He said, I couldn't keep him from climbing under the pews and all over the place. Uh, he wasn't going to sit still. He's been all over the place today, too. Here's a toss to Cedric Benson. Nice job defensively. Rodney Poole made the stop. A flag at the end of the play. Did they get a little face mask? They did. So Poole made a nice tackle, but he got a handful of face mask of Cedric Benson. And this one will be walked off against the Sooners. Before we come back with a second down in the scoreless game, Sam Ryan's got another update from New York. So Braylon Edwards, one of the best wide receivers in the country. We've got one of those here, too. In Clayton, Texas has something working. Cedric Benson, but he's going to be short of the first down. Notice Vince Young went to the line of scrimmage and snapped the ball very quickly that time. Needs to vary the snap count. So these defensive linemen, linebackers can't time their blitzes. You know, Greg Davis told them that. Don't let guys like Cody come in and kill you. Change it up a little bit. Oh, for sure. Here's a big third down and a long yard. 11 and a half to go. Second quarter, no score. Look at all these guys up here. Everybody stuffed up close. Benson, I think he got it. Didn't need much. Well, I don't know. Maybe the spot's not going to be too great. As you watch the linesman trot in, I might have jumped the gun there. It may not make any difference for Mac Brown because he may go for it on fourth down anyway. I think they've got to bring the chains out to look at this one. And they'll bring the sticks from the far side. We'll erase our broadband first and ten and let those two orange markers that are thousands of years old tell us the story. Just the hook on the chain short. Now he's got to make a decision. Yep. So he told us uh, he told us a couple days ago that we'll go for it a lot on fourth down. They have three out of five on fourth down this year, but none in a game this big. Fourth down and about four inches. Their field goal kicker has missed his last three, three field goals, so may may make a man difference in that. Yeah, well, you got a 6-5 quarterback. I think the jump over the pile is probably the right call, and Vince Young's got the first down. So the quarterback keeper, and he keeps the drive alive with this plunge. When the quarterback goes over the top like that, he is a he's open game. He's a free shot at those linebackers. But at that point in time, for that quarterback in that offense, they'll do anything to pick up a first down. Two tight ends again for Texas. First down at the OU 22. Play action. Young trying to throw and boy, that was dangerous. Tried to sneak one in to his receiver and Larry. Berdeen is the guy that broke it up. Hey, Bob, you know this, when Young goes back there and throws, his throwing motion, he's got a low throwing motion. And I know that the Oklahoma defense worked extra trying to make sure that whenever he was back in that pocket, gets their hand up, looking for ways to pick one off. They picked off one of his low passes last year and ran into the end zone when they were backed up against him. Yeah, he's 6'5", he's, uh, Swanee, but he throws the ball, and it comes out of there like he's 5'10". Second down and ten. He'll work from the shotgun this time. 
And he lost it. Oklahoma's got it. Last year, Vince Young put it down on the two-yard line, scrambling in for what would have been the tying touchdown. And he knows that lightning just struck again, this time at the 14-yard line. Well, he's a quarterback, maybe half quarterback, half running back, but no matter what you are, you've got to put the ball away. Put in a hat was Rufus Alexander right on the football. And Clint Ingram with the fumble recovery. That's the eighth takeaway for the Oklahoma defense this year. And it's the 17th they forced against this Texas team in the last five years. Peterson stacked up, maybe got a yard. Roderick Wright, who didn't play last week, nursing an injury. He's back, and he's a big, big part of their defensive line. I mean, about 305 big. <laughs> And he wanted to play in this ball game. Brad, if you ask me my impression of the first five or six series of this ball game, I would tell you turnovers and forced turnovers. Especially Texas has forced two. Oklahoma just got their first one. But the, but the other thing is Oklahoma's had terrible field position. Right. Jason White to throw, fires, and what a throw it was out to the 30-yard line to Will Peoples. And he took a big hit, but he held on. So this is the dimension that Oklahoma has that Texas does not have. They don't have a quarterback that can throw like Jason White. And they've got all these wide receivers in the slot there. Just going to break to the outside. The outside receiver clearing it out. But this is what this is what Oklahoma can do that Texas can't do. And with Aaron Ross coming over from that other corner to help out Michael Huff. It took a heck of a grab by Peoples to hold on. He really got whacked by both of them. First down, though, at the 31-yard line for the Sooners. White loading it, going deep down the near sideline. And it's caught. Ball loose. Nope, incomplete. Brandon Jones had it, just didn't hold it. That would have been a disaster for the Texas secondary. Well, he had it. Did he bobble it? The defensive back ran out of bounds on his own. That's Ross, 31. Oh, boy. Well, that, the, the official that called it was behind the receiver. I thought he had it, and I thought he took a step with both hands on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If he would have called that a fumble, I think that is more correct than it was not a fumble. At any rate, it's second down and 10 back at the 31. Kewan Jones back in. As the tailback, and he'll get the call. He wants straight up the middle. Got a first down across the 40, out to the 43-yard line. As he picks up 12, and he's got Oklahoma excited. Penalty marker at the end of the play. So Kiwan rips off a first down run, but let's see if it sticks. Bob and Brad, on the, at the end of that play, while the Oklahoma player was down on the ground, I can't give you a number. One of the Texas players came in and pushed the lineman in the back. Number 50, I believe it was. He just pushed him blatantly in the back. Didn't hit him really hard. Obvious call. The official was right on the money. And that was the call, Swanee. A personal foul. So it's all the way down to the 43-yard line for Oklahoma. Mac Brown doesn't like those kind of plays. We're down to nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. A scoreless game between the number two and number five team in the country. Oklahoma has something working offensively now. And off play action, Jason White loads it. Going long for Mark Clayton. Clayton's out there, and it's going to be no call in the end zone. Got tangled up with Philip Giger back there. The fans want a pass interference, and they don't get it. Well, he had a little stop and go. They took a shot at it. They crossed the 50. They got the penalty yardage marked off. Then they just did a little stop and go over there on the right side. It's a good time to take a chance at it. And the crowd getting another look at it as you get another look, too. 
But when the receiver is changing his course of action and running into the defensive back, that's a good no call. Yeah, I think that's a good no call, Swanner. I agree. Second down at the 43. White again wants to throw a screen. Keywan Jones with a nice catch and then turns it up and gets what he can inside the 40. And down to about the 38-yard line. Time now for our Aflac trivia question for this week. As, as our duck waddles across the screen, who was the last Oklahoma Sooner to lead the nation in scoring? We'll give you the answer a little bit later on. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew at the 99th version of the Red River Shootout. No shootout so far. Been a Texas Hold'em. They're scoreless. Slant pattern incomplete intended for Clayton. And it's going to bring up fourth down. We'll check the fourth down after we check in with Sam. Thanks. Alabama with a touchdown lead. So Maroney and Barber doing well for the Gophers, but they still trail Michigan. Remember, they had that huge lead on Michigan last year. And let it evaporate. Yeah, it's in the uh, Metrodome. So Mark Clayton and Jason White were going for the home run. Incomplete. No call. No score. We're first and ten for Texas. Do they open it up pretty soon, Bob? I keep worrying about a play action. Cedric yeah. Benson's carried it a lot. Here yeah. it comes. There it goes, incomplete. Yeah, and he had a receiver down the middle of the field. But Dan Cody got the pressure again. Exactly. Cody may have saved, well, he obviously saved the throw down deep, but let's take a look from the end zone. Play action, fake first down. Look at everybody. All the safeties are up to stop the run. You couldn't see the receiver that was down the middle, single coverage, and he was open. Second and ten for the Longhorns. Benson, left side, got some running room that time. Got five or six before he's knocked down. Jonathan Jackson is there. A reminder at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Benson's got 40 yards on 12 carries so far. And timeout taken by Texas. With seven minutes and 33 seconds remaining in the first half. Still no score. Tough game going on here at the Cotton Bowl. George of the Cowboys, Roy Williams, former OU star. The strong safety for Dallas on the sideline. A Heisman Trophy winner and a guy that'll take your head off. <laughs> Give it a chance. Well, you got that right. Texas has, has run on five of their six third down situations. Young to throw. Pressured again. Got it out to the tight end. Skate diving, and I think he got it. Lance Mitchell knocked him out of bounds, but Skate, who's been around a long time in his sixth year after a couple of surgery seasons got a medical red shirt he makes a big catch pick up a five on third and four we mentioned the wide receivers for Texas really weren't the go to guys in the passing game it's the tight ends Thomas and Skate coming into the game had caught 89 passes in their careers for 12 touchdowns so those two guys will play a lot shotgun now for young from the 32. Wants to throw on first down. He's got Benson wide open. Across the 40. Bump out of bounds near midfield at the 49-yard line. So Cedric Benson as a receiver comes up with a big play. And he in his career, he's been a good receiver. 52 receptions coming into the ball game. So they're two tight ends and Benson set over here to the to the right side. Good receivers for Young. Got that little that little drop down sidearm three quarter delivery. Picked up 17 yards out across the 49 yard line. Young in the pocket, going deep. Got a man out there. It's intercepted. No, dropped. Are oh, you gonna get you? Almost got it. Who got you? <laughs> <laughs> 
This ball's a little throw to the inside. On to Nagetcha, number 22. And Tweed, number four, doesn't do a very good job of getting in there and knocking the ball away at first, but ended up dropping the ball anyway. But that could have been an interception and our fourth turnover of the ball game. Which has been the story yeah. of the ball game. Defense and turnovers. And that's what he's telling him right there. Benson tripped up, got about three. Rufus Alexander made the stop, and that's the chant of Roof for the outside linebacker. Speaking of our game summary, our Pacific Life game summary has been a turnover story. The tip pass intercepted by Michael Huff gave Texas a chance, and Derek Johnson with his seventh force fumble of the year from behind, and then Vince Young inside the 15 put it on the ground. And Oklahoma got it back. Field position battle, turnover battle. Look at all the guys up. Young running from Cody again. Tried to throw a middle screen, and I think we're going to have an illegal receiver downfield probably, although it is the tight end, David Thomas, so maybe it's a holding in the middle of things. I think there was a bigger body downfield than Thomas. Yeah. And it was. Yeah. So you can throw that screen if you throw it behind the line of scrimmage and that's what Vince is talking to him about. But the ball went past the line of scrimmage. You have to throw that screen behind if your offensive linemen go downfield. Bob and Brad 64 Casey Studdard was I think the guy they called it on. So ball was coming. He was just kind of sidestepping away from it. <laughs> Pretty light on the seat though. <laughs> so the penalty is going to be declined. And that brings up the punting situation again. So here's been a guy that's been kind of a weapon today, actually. 34 yard average doesn't tell the story. The three inside the 20 does. Yeah, he just needs not to slip up and kick one to this guy where he can get something done. McGee again try to punt it away from Perkins. Perkins fair catch taken at about the 12 yard line. So again, not good field position for Oklahoma, courtesy of the Longhorn punter. 622 remaining in the half. We're still scoreless. We asked you the Aflac trivia question earlier. Who was the last Oklahoma Sooner to lead the nation in scoring? Who wants to go first? Uh, I'm the guy who is at the tail end of this whole game so far. But I'm going to take a wild guess and say it was Steve Owens. All right, Bob. Well, I got to say, at one point in time, my good buddy Billy Vessels was the leader, but I think it was Owens, too. I go with Greg Pruitt just to change it up. Get the answer for you after this. First down. From the 12. Here's a guy that looks like he's going to score a lot before his career's over. Peterson rips off about 15, and a flag flies in at the end of the play. So Peterson, who had a big 44-yard run the first time he touched it, rips off another first down, and I think they'll tack some more onto it. It's a face mask against Texas. So that takes bad field position and makes a good field position in a hurry. They'll walk it out to the 31, almost the 32-yard line. There's the question. Last Oklahoma Sooner to lead the nation in scoring, and the answer is... Whoops. Billy Sims led the nation in 1979. So we all whiffed, guys. It was a whiff. It's a defensive battle. You knew we were going to come up with zeros, the three <laughs> of us. Now it's Keywon Jones. Roderick Wright made the stop. On. There we said uh, nothing changes from a week ago. So we will head to Iowa with the same numbers. I think, Three, I, two, one. I think I was half right, though. I think when Billy played here, Billy Vessels in 52 scored all those touchdowns. He was probably leading at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get, do I get a half for that or not? I don't know. Billy's looking on from a better place. We know he's got a good seat. Yes, sir. Second and eight. Two tight ends set. They fake the toss one way, and Peterson gets it going left. Peterson in the open field, across midfield, and now runs over Michael Huff. Another big run by the big freshman, 26 yards. Adrian Peterson.
Jackson with a big run. Watch the wide receivers as they come in from the right side. Watch him try to get into the way of some faces here. This block right here, over here. Then all he's got to do is get between them. This kid was in high school this time last year. He is big, strong, and fast. And he got the respect of the veterans really early this summer when he showed up. Freshman out of Palestine, Texas, and he's run about halfway home with 95 yards. Jones hit after a yard game. That's about it. Frank Ocam, another freshman from right here in Dallas, a big fella, makes the hit. Bob and Brad, you recall when we were talking to the Oklahoma coaches that they were talking about Clayton and the wide receivers as a group. We all understand how good they are at catching the ball. But Coach Stoops, Coach Long said that what the receivers have done all this year is worked harder at their overall game. Yep. And part of that was the blocking downfield. Coaches always say a wide receiver's block downfield can be the difference between a five-yard run and a 25-yard touchdown run. Clayton is the guy that got a crushing block in the big run by Peterson last week. And the win over Texas Tech. Whistle stop play. Oklahoma. And Oklahoma has taken a timeout yeah, before the snap. Called that from the sideline. The coach called that one. And you couldn't do that before, but coaches can call timeouts this year. Bob Stoops wanted one. He's got it with 404 left in the half. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show. We'll take a look at tradition in this game as well. How do you like the first half? I tell you what, Oklahoma's really running the ball very well, but they're not getting any production on third down. That something's going to have to change in the second half for them to get this they're, win. They're over 5 on third down, Oklahoma. Texas is running the ball, and their defense is playing outstanding ball right now. We'll show you what they're doing. They've been terrific on both sides of the ball as far as defense goes. Right now, let's take it upstairs, and we'll be back with the Valvoline Halftime Show after this. All right, John, fellas, welcome to the Cotton Bowl with us. Pony didn't have to go very far, almost a home game for him. It's a drive away. I love Aaron's suits. I, I always wanted to just take one home and go camping in it. <laughs> just build a tent? Yep. Yeah. Second down and nine, Oklahoma. At the Longhorn 41 yard line. On the carry, Peterson, and that should put him. At the century mark, I think he's got over 100, and that'll be five straight games to open a season for the sensational freshman. It had never happened with all the great running backs Oklahoma had in the past. They'd never had somebody even rush four games in a row to start a career, and this kid's now done it five times. 11.4 a pop today. Yeah, just what Oklahoma needed, right? Is a running back to go with this outstanding passing game they had from last year? Exactly. And a, and a Offensive line that returned every starter. The rain is picking up again. The toss is to Peterson. Looking for the first down, and he's got it. Peterson inside the 30. He's got five more. What makes the 19-year-old so good? Well, he can add a lot to your team with different dimensions. Our spotlight on Adrian Peterson. First of all, he's got speed. That fast. We know that. Blink of an eye. He's powerful. He'll carry some guys. And for how young he is, he really sees the field, Bob. He's got it all. And, and like I said, he's got the respect. The young kid came in and earned the respect of the veteran players within a couple of weeks. He gets a breather here. Tashard Choice comes into the Oklahoma backfield. And now another timeout taken by the Sooners. As Jason White knows, they're getting down in that territory with under three minutes to go in the half when you don't want to waste an opportunity. So he's going to call timeout and bring it over to the sideline again. While he does that, let's check in again. In New York, here's Sam Ryan. It's scoreless, almost impossible to believe, other than you knew both teams had good defenses, but no score with under three minutes to go. Well, when you look at the series the last few years, the amount of points have been scored. Oklahoma scored 65 last year, got in the 60s a few years ago, and, you know, this game has always been a lot of offense, but, but I, I, I'm not saying I like the defense because right. I like offense. I mean... I, I can take a half of this, and then let's get some points in the second half. <laughs> All right. Peterson, 53, so half of his yards in this game have come on this drive alone. First time he touched it, remember, it was near the goal line, and he went 44 yards. Longest run given up by Texas all year. He's done it with speed, power, and moves. He's over 100, and he's back in there as a tailback in the eye at the 29 of Texas. Here he is on the counter. 
Peterson trying to get to the corner. Nice tackle on the corner. Phil Giger, the safety came up, hit him low, only a pickup of a yard. Well, Giger is a guy that will hit you. That secondary, the free safety. He's third on the team in tackles, but uh, he'll come up and hit you and lay one on you. He had one of the better games despite the lopsided score last year. He had nine tackles in the Oklahoma-Texas game. He's one of the captains, a senior out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Pickup of one. Jason White runs up under center now and second down to nine. Fullback runnels in motion. Peterson trying to cut back. Broke a tackle, puts his head down, and gets inside the 25, down to the 24, and down to 20. Well, Bob and Brad, I really like what Bob Stoops has done in the last three minutes of this first half. He's really taken charge of the game from the sideline, slowed it down a little bit, I think, for his offense, make them take the time to see what the defense is doing, be very, very sure about the handling of the ball in the rain. We're playing for the last three minutes to try and get something on the scoreboard, not to lose the field position, to go for a field goal, or better, to get it into the end zone. Kiwan Jones has come in for Adrian Peterson, so again, he'll flank White in the shotgun, trips down to the right side, four wide receivers set. Here's White on a quick throw. Flashes it out, broken tackle at the 20, and a first down inside the 15 for Travis Wilson. So they needed five and they got eight. It was a missed tackle out there by Ross. And that's what they're going to continue doing. If they know one guy is not a good tackler, they're going to continue doing this. That's Ross, 31. When you come up, you just... You you, you don't want to knock his block off. Just come up and get him down. Right. You're out there by yourself. Get him down. This drive started for Oklahoma at its own 12-yard line. And six minutes and a half later, they're in the 10th play of the drive. First down at the Longhorn 15. Play action. White wants to throw. Incomplete. Huff was covering out there. And the pass was wide. I don't care. I don't care if your knees are good. That running that far and then get hitting like that when you're running full speed is tough on a 24-year-old quarterback. And you're trying to throw back across your body <laughs> going 100 miles an hour to your left. Um, 24 is not old, but for, uh, for him, I'm sure it is. Showdown Saturday continues here on ABC. Here's the games you'll see next. Cal against the top team of the country. Wisconsin, Ohio State, the Big Ten, Oklahoma State, Colorado, Big 12, and in the ACC, Georgia Tech, Maryland. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Peterson back in on second down and 10. They toss it to him on the right side. He found a crease inside the 10, the 5, and he's down first and goal of the home. Another 11-yard gain for Adrian Peterson. When he does that, when, he, when you fake the toss, when he fakes the toss this way, it holds these linebackers just enough so that when you go the other way, they're not in pursuit. It just holds them. Now he gets out here and he just makes something happen. Well over 100 yards in the first half. First and goal inside the five. Peterson stays in. Will he get the handle again? Penalty markers down. I think they're going to call this too many guys in the huddle. You're right. You well, when you're down there and you think you yeah. can run it, this certainly changes the complexion of things. That's the position violation. It's the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. You can't have more than 11 players in the huddle. Like, and sometimes it happens not on intentionally. You might have 12 or 13 because you don't know what personnel group you want in the ball game. So two guys left a little late and the official called it against uh, Oklahoma. See how much this changes how Oklahoma approaches this first and goal. Back at the nine yard line. Two tight ends set. One of them in motion right there. They'll toss it to Peterson anyway. Puts his head down. And it's knocked out of bounds with about the eight. Aaron Harris. And Larry Dibbles made the stop. Peterson, nine carries on this 12-play drive right now. And you know, wow. watching the film from last week and the win for Oklahoma over Texas Tech, Bob, 
I'm watching this kid and he got down in a situation a little bit closer to the goal line than this and he took it and he ran over a defensive back in the end zone and I thought Herschel Walker over Bill Bates in 1980. <laughs> yeah but how long do you stay with this kid you got the Heisman Trophy winner back the quarterback you got your five top receivers and an offensive line back when do you start throwing it. Let's see if it's here. White sees some open grass but he'll only get to the five. And I don't care how healthy your knees are when you got guys like Roderick Wright and Tim Crowder chasing you. He gets it. Well the problem was everybody was covered. And now the clock becomes a big factor. And they'll stop it. But it's fourth down. So it looks like they're going to have to take three. That's not what Bob Stoops wanted you can bet. But again that penalty for too many players in the huddle well, is what probably cost him a better chance. Well for the a other touchdown. thing is. That was a pass on second down and he wanted to throw it to score or else at least be an incompletion where it would stop the clock. So they'd get another play before they might have to try a field goal. Trey DiCarlo is three out of five on the season. He'll try to break a scoreless tie here. And he'll do it with a 24 yard field goal attempts. Again the officials stop play. 14 seconds all that remains in the half. And regardless of whether DiCarlo hits this field goal or not, both teams are going to head to the locker room and know that they've got two quarters left to straighten this thing out. This time last year, Oklahoma had such a huge lead that I think Texas spirit was probably gone by the second half. That won't be the case today, no matter if this 24-yard field goal goes through or not. Mark Bradley is the holder. Number one right there on the left side of your screen. He's got some tricks. And I just had to mention it because he's one of the best athletes <laughs> yeah. on this team he's in a variety a of ways. He can throw it. He can run it. And on the other side for Texas, that's Greg Robinson, the and defensive he, coordinator. And he knows all about Bradley. Yep. And and the uh, the desire in the past of Oklahoma and Bob Stoops to run some trick plays at different times. Chicanery. Mark Bradley, we talked about all the things he can do as a kick returner, as a wide receiver. He can do a little bit of everything. His first career kick return was a year ago, and he took it from coast to coast, 100 yards for a touchdown. First pass attempts, throwing on the wide receiver option, touchdown to Clayton. First end around. First time he touched it. 51 yard touchdown run. <laughs> now, now he comes out and he's going to hold for this field goal right before half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not trying to set you up, folks. It might be a kick here in a second. It, it's probably going to be a kick, but uh, just letting you know what the Texas coaches know. That's why the timeout, no doubt, was <laughs> called. Bradley to spot it right there for DeCarlo, the left footed kicker. And now Texas takes the timeout. They'll let. Trey DiCarlo think about it a little bit longer. And now the fans getting restless in the Cotton Bowl because they want to get out there and get a corn dog and get back in here for the <laughs> second half. We'll take a timeout with them. 14 seconds remaining first half. We'll see if Oklahoma can score when we come back. The University of Oklahoma ranks first in the nation per capita among public universities and national merit scholars enrolled. And it's almost quadrupled the number of endowed professorships in less than a decade. OU $700 million in new construction includes one of the world's largest weather research centers and an expanded art museum to house the single most important gift of art ever given to a public university. OU ranks in the top 10 in the nation in the freshman year experience. The University of Oklahoma, flagship for excellence. 14 seconds remaining in the half. The Valvoline halftime show with John Craig and Aaron is maybe just a couple of kicks away. DiCarlo, the junior out of Carrollton, Texas. He's a Texas native and trying to put his OU team in front. And now Mark Bradley comes way over the sideline with the referee. He wants to get a towel and wipe his hands off. It's raining pretty hard out there right now. It's coming down sideways as Swanee mentioned earlier. Swanee? Hey, hey Brad, if, if Oklahoma was going to have an opportunity to kick a field goal, what better place than this particular end zone? Because it's all OU fans. Look around the stadium. They're sitting there very quiet. They're not moving. 
They're not jumping up and down, kind of like that uh, baseball game we're watching <laughs> the other night in Boston. Right. And they got tied up. They're not doing anything. On the far end, behind them, you know, the, the Texas fans, they can yell and scream. It's not going to impact them way down here. So if, if, if you're looking for the better end zone, they found it. And you see the Texas band is right behind the OU bench right now. Fully clad in cowboy hats. And Al Dowden comes back out the referee. They had to call upstairs to spot the ball in the proper location. That's where we'll start. So the five yard line is where the snap will come. How did they forget where it was to begin with? Uh, they wanted a I, corn dog at halftime. I know, too. I know we've had some a few timeouts here and a few different things going on, but that's the pitch is supposed to do. That's the, that's the job. Now it's, a, now it's a 22 yard field goal attempt for Oklahoma. DiCarlo trying to snap the scoreless tie. Bradley to hold. Kick on the way and it's good. So it took almost two complete quarters for somebody to draw first blood and it goes to the Sooners 3 nothing. Kickoff coming up after a short break nine seconds remaining first half. In the rain in Dallas Oklahoma leads Texas 3 nothing capping. The longest and most sustained drive of the day by either team. 15 plays, 83 yards, over six minutes, but disappointed, I'm sure, a little bit the Sooners are. And that they got 71 yards on that drive from Adrian Peterson, but couldn't get a touchdown at the end of it. High short kick. Fair catch is going to be called for and taken by one of the up men. Wives. Texas I don't think is going to be too desperate right here. I think they're probably taking knee and head to the locker room and think about the fact that they'll get the football first to start the third quarter. Yeah, give it to Benson or Young. They got two guys that can go all the way. They give it to Benson and he only goes to the 24 yard line and that will be the end of the first half. Defensive battle and so far the slight edge to the Sooners of Oklahoma who are trying to win this war for the fifth time in a row and Bob Stoops has the lead and he's with Lynn Swan. Well coach your defense is pitching a shutout and that's always good. Your offense moving the ball down the field that last drive not great field position throughout the first half. If there's one little thing I guess maybe third down trying yeah, to convert third, third down. down efficiencies have been a little off and uh, we've had some we've had some big plays we've been on the you know right on the verge of making got to make them and we got to keep the run game going that's been really good to us and pick it up in some of the passing game. We'll see you in the second half coach. All right, Coach Stoops with the lead. 3-0, though, this time. It wasn't a blowout like it was this time a year ago. Well, the guys are waiting in the rain. John, Craig, and Aaron, let's go to the halftime show, fellas. Brad, waiting in the rain is the right thing. We're not seeing our apologies <laughs> to Gene Kelly. You know, Mac Brown did a great job earlier this week when he deflected everything away from his players and onto himself by saying he was outcoached in the last four of these games. I really respect that, guys. I think what Coach Brown was saying was, hey, enough is enough. This is going to be the year where it's going to be different. He made some great offseason acquisitions and some coaches trying to change the attitude of that team. That's what Texas need is a change in attitude. Well, I'll tell you what. You saw Bob Stoops is 54-2 and two when leading at halftime. Now he has to coach in this game for the first time in a long time he has to go in and make an adjustment especially on offense to figure out exactly what Texas is doing up front on defense because that front four of defense has confused him stick around for more on the Valvoline halftime show when we return to Texas we have a three nothing lead for the Oklahoma Sooners back with more in a moment Time show. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. We're here with a three-nothing defensive battle between Texas and Oklahoma. You know what? I can understand why a sophisticated guy like me is under the umbrellas, but these two big burly football players under umbrellas, I'm shocked. He played in Green Bay. He wanted to go sleeveless. <laughs> I wanted to go dry. Now with the Dome Stadium. Hey, let me tell you right now, in the locker room for Texas, you know that football team is over there and they're saying, can you believe that we're right now in this football game? Because it's been so long since they've gone into halftime and been in a football game. They have to be excited, but they have to be composed. And conversely, Oklahoma has to be thinking, uh-oh, this is a fist fight. Oklahoma is thinking it's a fist fight because it is. I really 
respect the way Bob Stoops committed himself to the run late there in the game. That's what this game is going to be. Look at We don't need no stinking umbrellas. <laughs> this is football weather, baby. It's wet. It's mano y mano. I'd said it was going to be a battle up front. The team that controls the lines of scrimmage better in the second half is going to win this ball game right now. Oklahoma getting it done, even though they're only up. You're going to run the football if you have Adrian Peterson to hand it off to, I would think. Hey, run the football, baby. When you got him back there, that, and we knew they'd do it, too. Adrian Peterson, again, for the fifth consecutive game, he goes over 100 yards. Never been done by an Oklahoma running back. Okay, not only is he powerful and everything, but the jerseys are a little wet. He's running right through arm tackles. Doing a very good job. This kid is a young guy doing what he does. It's incredible. But Derek Johnson up for the Lombardi running, and this is why. He forces White out of the pocket, then comes up with a big strip to turn over a big play defensively. Turnovers have been a big part of this game. Both teams have managed to cough it up, but just the same. The defenses have risen to the occasion and not allowed points afterwards. Well, Adrian Peterson, again, watch out when he gets over here on the side that he runs beyond the tacklers. He's got a burst in him that most freshmen just don't have, and he has a presence about him in this football game. And that's why Oklahoma has done so well, particularly on that last drive. First seven plays of that last drive on the scoring drive, he goes down and they run the football. Cedric Benson not having a Peterson-type day, but having a pretty good day. He looks like he's on target for over 100 yards as well. Yeah, Cedric Benson, great back. Texas has to commit more to the run, much more so than o or Oklahoma's done a, m a much better job of that. They have to stick with it. They have to get something going and generate offensively. From what I've seen from Young today, they're not going to be able to throw the ball. they got to get it done on the and, ground. And you know what else? When you run the ball as well as both these teams are right now, or at least the offensives are kind of short underneath, boom, big play down the field. To me, a rough day is it's crazy. I mean, we do some of the craziest stuff. Every time you run on the field, 85,000 people go crazy. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Strike up the band as these fans are ready for the second half of football here in the Babylon Halftime Show. The weather has not been terrific. Ooh, oops. This is all about traditions. Oklahoma, it's the Sooner Schooner. Not allowed on the field today, so we went back a week ago for a day in the life of the Roughnecks. Game day. Wake up early in the morning. Hey, Preston! It's game day! Here's your wake-up call! From there, we get everything ready. Sooner's the grumpy one. It's always picking on Boomer. He's always biting him and nipping him, and he's not a nice pony. Uh, after that, we go and pick up our queen. Hey, is it just queen or queen shoot? Queen or queen shoot. Now, is it one, two, three, queen or queen shoot? One, two, three, queen or queen shoot. Then from there, we drive into the stadium. Hey, if you don't blow any calls, we'll let you know when we shoot, OK? I mean, you know, the shotguns are great, and everybody likes to hear them go boom, but the drivers, I mean, our responsibility is the mascot of the university. Yeah, okay, how hard it is to, to drive some ponies. We're out here every day having to shoot in unity all these guns. You know how hard it is? Yeah. Did you like how I went around the punter and, like, in between the receivers and stuff? He didn't wreck it, so that's a plus. Hey, uh, Justin, do you need any help with that? Please? As animals do, um, they don't typically tend to uh, use restroom facilities. And uh, cleaning it up in front of 85,000 people is a very humbling experience. Just another day in the uh, life of a roughneck. I can sure identify with that humbling experience working with these two guys. We'll continue <laughs> with more of the Babylon Halftime Show in a moment. 3-0, the Sooners have the lead. The Red River Shootout is about tradition. It's also about outstanding players and athletes. Case in point, Roy Williams, one of my all-time favorite football plays there when he reached over the line and swatted it away, causing the fumble now with the Dallas Cowboys. 
The first thing when you come to this game, the electricity that you feel inside of this building is absolutely tremendous. What was it like for you playing in this series? It's, it's amazing. You can't beat it. I mean, if, if the viewers are at home, I mean, at home here right now, they'll see the stadium splitting from 50 to 50. It's all crimson, and the other side is all brute orange, and nobody cares about brute orange. But, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's hype. I mean, everybody's excited about it. All right, Roy, advantage or disadvantage? OU is used to being on a, a romp at halftime. Will they come out and be able to recover? Yeah, Stoops is going to get on them, man. They had a lot of turnovers. Uh, Peterson fumble and Jason White fumble and all that. We got to we gotta get uh, get that pass us and uh, go ahead and stop a mud hole in them. Right. Roy, real quick, what's the hardest thing about getting ready to play in a game this big? You, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. <laughs> it can't not be hard. hard. It's OU Texas. He's from Notre Dame. He forgot how big games were those guys. <laughs> no, man. It's a big game. I brought Eddie George here today, Leroy Glover. So uh, Eddie George said this is bigger than Ohio State, Michigan. And that's wow. a big statement. <laughs> I told him he came here and he, and he said it. By the way, we were going to have Ricky Williams here, but he backed out at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking, Ricky. Stick around. The that. second half that. is coming up. Thanks uh, a lot, Roy. Well. <laughs> well, the spotlight so far has been on defense at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Oklahoma. A late field goal. Leads Texas as we're just about set for the third quarter, three to nothing. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan down on the sideline. Partner, it's been a battle of defenses, turnovers, field position, and two pretty good running backs, but it's a youngin' that's getting the better of the veteran. It's the freshman that's, that's whooping up on. Now he came in, I think he was eighth or something in the nation right. rushing. Uh, Benson was the leader in the nation, 187 yards, and he ain't getting it done. I mean, he's in, uh, what's he got, 43 at halftime. Right. And Peterson, meanwhile, had most of that 126 on the scoring drive, but Oklahoma comes down. They get down to the situation where it looks like they're going to get a shot, and they end up with a very costly Oklahoma penalty. Oklahoma has played pretty well offensively. They've been backed up inside their 20-yard line all six possessions. Uh, the thing that Texas has not done is take advantage of the two turnovers that they've gotten. Uh, they, have, they have not done anything with them. Texas has to come out in the second half and run a little bit better and hit some big plays down the field. They've tried a couple times the play action that we expected to see. The problem has been for Vince Young, inconsistency, inaccuracy, and guys like Dan Cody exactly. hitting him in the back. To throw it. So Texas will get the football first, though. DeCarlo's got it teed up. Phil Geiger and Terrell Brown are back waiting for Texas. Strong kick, six yards in the end zone. Geiger won't bring it out. Our Pacific Light game summary statistically in the first half. As you see, OU with the big edge more than twice as much on the ground. And Mac Brown told us, if we don't outrush them, we're not in very good shape. Yeah, the uh, third down possessions aren't good for either side. Defense, look at the uh, own 12-yard line. That's where uh, Oklahoma starting the two turnovers and the one turnover for uh, the three turnovers in the game. Nobody's capitalized on them. Uh, it's just been a defensive struggle. Young comes up to the line with his Longhorn offense at the 20-yard line. Play action to Benson. Young will keep it. But he's only going to get about two before Rodney Poole knocks him out of bounds. Let's check in with Swanee. Well, guys, Mac Brown must have been listening to you and Bob. He came out and he said, you know, we've got to do much better on third down efficiency. He said turnovers are going to be key in the second half. But most importantly, when his football team was in the locker room, Mac reminded him, he said, I told you this was going to be a heavyweight fight. It is. We're just going to have to go out, slug it out with him in the second half, keep the turnovers down, and stay after it, and we can win this ball game, guys. And remember, the Sooners. Now the team that's wearing the championship belt the last four years, if you're going to take it away from them, you got to beat them so far through a half to half. Young, quick drop, quick throw, and too high, incomplete intended for Nate Jones. Well, bottom, up third and seven. Bottom line, if Texas gets into a situation where they have to throw, if they make them one-dimensional and they can't run and they have to throw, Oklahoma's going to win this ballgame. Yep. Texas has no receptions by a wide receiver today. And that's not good. And of course, Roy Williams is sitting up in Detroit, actually sitting in Atlanta yeah. this afternoon, getting ready to play the Falcons. Yeah, the last few years, they've had a ton of good receivers. DJ Johnson as well is young as a throw, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Nate Jones, a wide receiver, but he went one way and the ball went the other. 
Actually, it was Brian Carter, the wide receiver, incomplete. So the only reception there among the leaders is Cedric Benson. He's done most of the work on the ground, but not too effectively. Oklahoma should get good field position here. Now can you keep it away from Antonio Perkins? That's the question. This has been the deepest McGee's had to punt. He's kept it out of number 28's hands, but can he hear? I think this time Perkins has got a shot from the 34. Remember, he's got eight touchdowns on returns, but they know that, and they've done a nice job covering him. Oklahoma's offensive leaders in the first half. We talked about Adrian Peterson, the sensational 19-year-old at 126 yards on the ground. Wilson with two catches. Jason White, those aren't Heisman Trophy numbers, but they haven't had to be yet because of the ground game. They're not asking him to do as much as they did last year when they didn't have a very good ground game. Now, right now, Cedric Griffin on that special teams was shaken up, Bob, and I'm wondering if Oklahoma's thinking maybe we should test that corner. Best starting field position of the day for Oklahoma. Just inside its own 44. Peterson trying to get to the corner, does. And puts his head down and plows for about 10 more. Texas had good position on the outside, and he just ran around him. He beat him to the sideline and then got upfield for nine or ten yards. Watch this. All these guys in the white uniforms get outrun to the sideline. Fourth run of ten yards or more today by Adrian Peterson. Likes to go to the right side, 73 yards. On first down. This time he goes left and doesn't find as much room. Aaron Harris closed the door. The middle linebacker only a pickup of about a yard. We mentioned earlier they call him A.D. Those aren't his initials. But when he was young, he had so much energy. His parents said he could run all day, thus the A.D. And he's doing a pretty good job on this day. He goes out. Kiwan Jones comes in. And Kiwan was almost a thousand yard rusher himself a year ago. And he's the veteran, the junior, and a jinx high Tulsa, Oklahoma. Second down and nine. From the 45, they pitch it to Kiwan. He cuts up in the middle and gets about three tough yards. Derek Johnson, the linebacker, number 11, in on another tackle. It's going to bring up a third down and long situation, at least over five. That's Josh Heupel with the headset, the former star quarterback for Oklahoma. They, um, they had Heupel, Hipple, and White all in the same recruiting class. That sounds like a law firm. Those three guys. Heupel, <laughs> Hipple, and White. They lead, they lead Oklahoma career-wise in touchdown passes, the three of them. Jason White just passed Josh Heupel last week. Now he comes up throwing first down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line to Brandon Jones. A pickup of 12. Is what the Oklahoma was expecting to see from them. The linebackers blitzing, leaving in the secondary one-on-one -on -one coverage. He sees it. Look at this. You got all this room to throw to on the inside. That's just good, good preparation and good blocking up front. Peterson back in now at the tailback spot as they've got it first down. Inside the Longhorn 30, leading by three. The counter to Peterson. Barge is ahead for about three. It'll bring up second down and seven. Most touchdown passes. Jason White overtook Josh Heupel last week in the win over Texas Tech. His class was recruited in, in 99, so Heupel played first, and then Hippel took over for Heupel. <laughs> and then White. White, this is his sixth year. You know, he had a couple of medical red shirts and all that other stuff, so he's the last guy to play. Ruddles, uh, fullbacks in motion, and now settles in the backfield. They toss it to Peterson. Peterson through a crease inside the 15 and down inside the 10. What balance. 17 more yards. 
Boy, this kid's got it all. Well, he does, but he's got some help up front. It's just going to be a toss to the right side. Now, watch as he's going to stretch the thing. Runnels 38's going to get a block. Now, look at this. Just look what he sees. He sees this developing and that. And for a true freshman to see that and just get up inside. And again, he is hard to bring down. He just doesn't come down if you go at his ankles. First and goal, Oklahoma. Just inside the Texas 10. Peterson again. Down to the six. Well, Bob and Brad, just to give you the Texas perspective on Adrian Peterson. When I asked Mac Brown when he was coming out of the field. I asked him, I said, Coach, hey, did you talk to your defense any about tackling? Maybe missing some of those tackling. He just looked at me and said, said Swanee, hey, that Adrian, McF that Adrian Peterson is just a darn good back. And we get our guys in position, and he is just running hard. And we're just going to have to gang up on him. Of course, remember, a heavy recruiting battle for number 28 between these two schools because he is a Texas native for about an hour and a half southeast of here. Second and goal. He gets the toss and he's hitting his tracks. Nice open field stop that time by Brian Robinson and a loss of three or four. Yeah, they've tried that play on several occasions and most of the time it's worked and Robinson said, hey, the heck with this. 39 over here on this side just watch as he's going to come across he sees what's developing now he gets his comes under control that's a good open open field tackle by the defensive end as good as you'll see on a guy that's that shifty well now he, he was in down shock, and goal. yeah he I'm was sure he shot. was one guy brought him down this is a huge play for the Texas defense especially if they can keep him out of the end zone that's Clayton in motion White from the shotgun on third and goal at the 10. Scrambling. Throws out of the flat. Caught, but immediately it's Michael Huff who's done a nice job in the secondary, and he puts the hit on Bubba Moses. So that'll bring out the field goal unit. Texas did its job. They tightened up when they had to. This high-powered offense for Oklahoma can't get it in the end zone. Last year he threw 40 touchdown passes. Four in this game. In the Yeah. In the first four games this year, White's thrown nine touchdown passes, but but none so far. Trey DiCarlo hit the 22-yarder in the final seconds of the second quarter. He'll try a 26-yarder here. Bradley to hold. And the kick on the way. And DiCarlo is added to the Oklahoma lead. But again, Mac Brown knows his Longhorn team is just one play away from being in front in the ballgame. Another field goal. 9.02 remaining third quarter. 6 nothing sooner. Don't you know, a month and a half into the season, that guy's still not used to being in coach's gear. Frank Solich, former head coach at Nebraska. Who's he pulling for, Brad? I don't know. He didn't like playing either one of these teams. <laughs> <laughs> Eight yards deep. Giger won't bring it out. Texas will work from the 20 after we check in with you. Oh, biggest game for the Gophers in a long, long time. Beat them last year. They're going to possibly beat them again. Here's Cedric Benson into the secondary. Benson off to the races. And across the 40 to the 42-yard line. 42-yard run, his best of the day. They needed something because Texas has not been on the field a lot offensively lately. He's going to start this way and right up here. Watch the defensive end is going to go unblocked. This end right there is going to go unblocked and he's not going to make the tackle because that end was looking for the quarterback. And Vincent ran right up inside of it. Now they try to come left. He cuts back into the middle and loses a yard. Lynn Magruder cut him off of the pass, and then he got help from his friends. Fifth time, though, today that Benson has had no gain or lost yardage on his 16 carries. Cedric Benson, the nation's leading rusher. What makes him so good as we take a spotlight look? He is strong. We know that. He can run over tacklers. Versatile. Baseball player until this year, he gave that up. And he's got some moves, too. Emulates Ricky Williams. That's his hero. Wears his hair the same. Gets up slow at the end of plays the same. Has moved into the number two spot behind Ricky in the all-time 
record books for Texas having passed Earl Campbell. There you see the dreadlocks out of the back of the helmet. Ricky doesn't have those anymore. Say so idolizes him, huh? Uh -huh. And when, when Ricky cut his hair earlier in the season, he uh, went to uh, Benson and he said, hey, uh, Ricky cut his hair. He said, don't go there, Coach. Yeah. Coach Brown said, how about that? He goes, I don't think so, Coach. Third down, big play for Texas. Here comes a blitz from the corner. Young's in trouble, and down he goes. Nope, he got rid of it. And almost completed it. How in the world did he get rid of that ball? I don't know. Perkins, I thought, had both his arms wrapped up. He tried to get it to Swede, and it's incomplete. <laughs> this is, he is 6'5", and he's got these guys down around him. He didn't even see the blitz coming from his right side. There comes Perkins, and I thought he had him completely wrapped up. He somehow snuck his arm out of there. That's that's not a normal move for a quarterback to get hit like that. Free your throwing arm and get back up there and throw it. Let's see how much energy Perkins has as a punt returner after that play defensively. He'll get a chance on the 21. Perkins, they have gobbled him up today on the punt coverage. Nice job again, only a five-yard return. So Oklahoma's got the lead. They've got the ball back. But it's still a one-play game with 7-12 remaining third quarter. Oklahoma goes back to work. First and 10. They lead 6-0. They've got 7-12 remaining third quarter. Toss Adrian Peterson. Half to about the 29. We'll give him four more yards. He's over 160. He's right at 160 on the day. So with this 19-year-old, be overwhelmed by the Red River shootout and the half crimson, half burnt orange crowd of the Cotton yeah. Bowl? I don't think so. Think back to the last true freshman that has made an impact on a team. That's uh, Maurice Claret, Ohio State National Championship. This kid impresses me more than Maurice Claret. I agree. On second down, here he goes again into the secondary, running over people out to the 41 yard line. 12 more. Adrian Peterson brought down by Cedric Griffin who's back in there in the secondary after being shaken up of course this offensive line has been around most of them are three year starters for Oklahoma and and, and Peterson he, he's breaking in pretty good they got a solid passing game they got a Heisman Trophy quarterback returning so all the attention is going to be on the quarterback the receivers that offensive line is good. You know, wait, wait, he's graduating. He comes back to these little guy guys that may not block so well. Here's a quick throw out with the blockers in front of Clayton. His two other wideouts trying to give him some room. They got him about seven yards. He's been kind of quiet, Marquez. But what a player. One of the captains, a Bolitnikoff finalist a year ago, is one of the top receivers in the country. He averages a touchdown every seven catches. And today he's got only three grabs for 19 yards. And, and Bob, he's good. And Brad, he's been getting banged up a little bit. We saw him limp off in the first half. Just a reminder for the folks at home: Oklahoma does not give out injury information. Whoa! What a hit that was. Got to be Derek Johnson, and it was. Man, he's something. Six four, two thirty five. The senior captain out of Waco, Texas. And he's up for about every defensive award you can look for. The yep. Butkus, the Lombardi, Nagurski, Bednarik, you mentioned it. You talk about it. And now Peterson limping off after that hit. He yep. took a wallop he did. in the leg. That could be a knee or maybe a thigh, but uh, maybe he'll shake it off. There's his numbers. Incredible. Kiwan Jones back in there for him now. On first down, it is Jones. Jones, the smaller back of the two, 5'9", 200 pounder. And again, the tackle by Derek Johnson. You know, this offense for Oklahoma has been on the field a lot. The last two possessions, they had 25 plays, and they've got, they have been on their 30 plays compared to Texas. Only seven plays that the offense for Texas has been on there. And remember, Texas had a three and out, and they saw that 15-play drive at the end of the second quarter go by. When you add in halftime and all the bands, yeah. it's almost like Texas hadn't been on the field offensively for about an hour. I think time of possession, nine more minutes has uh, Oklahoma had it than Texas. Nice play fake by White. Scrambles and throws on the run. Incomplete. 
in and out of the hands of Travis Wilson, who was sliding, trying to get that ball that was thrown behind him. And he was open. He, all he needed to do was just get the ball to him. Jason has not really been on the mark. Let's, real go, back, accurate today. let's go back a couple of plays. Adrian Peterson, the hit coming up right there. Yeah. Oh. And I hope it's a thigh and not a knee. Yeah. Is it one of those wicked hits? It looked like it was his thigh. He's got a thigh pad there. And it was Johnson that hit him. I don't think he'd be standing up looking that anxious if he was but injured too much. But that's something that the longer you stand there, the, the more it could tighten right. up. If he bruised it, it's just going to get worse. Texas takes a timeout here with 417 remaining in the third quarter. In the Red River shootout, Oklahoma with a six-point lead. Greg Robinson, former defensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs, first year with Texas, hoping his team can stop a third and seven here of Oklahoma at the Horns 44-yard line. White wants to throw out in the flat and does in a nice open field tackle again. And it's Aaron Harris. They had man coverage on in the secondary. They hadn't played a lot coming in, but Greg decided we're going to play more man-to-man -man coverage. We're going to get up in their face. And when you have a screen and you have man-to-man -man coverage, this is exactly what Harris should do. Get up and cover that back. He likes what he saw on yeah. that play. Dibble says, good call, coach. Good call. <laughs> Ferguson set to punt. High punt. Fair catch called for. Going to be down near the five. Great job. Jacob Rice, the snapper, got down there. Nice kick. Even better coverage. Well, we've got a second here. Let's take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook. Bob. Well, we talk about defense, and be, one of the things you can do is be smart. The defensive end here, he's going to just jump right inside at the snap of the ball. Now, the reason he does this is because he's got the snap count. He knows the cadence of the quarterback. You pay attention. you got to be physical, but it also helps to be smart. That's Dan Cody, a fifth-year senior. Quick snap from the sixth. Benson broke a tackle. Out close to the 14-yard line. Gives them some room to work. We'll see how they work with it after we check in one time. More with Sam. I think Rich Brooks' troops would give up in that game, and they have it. Here, a second down. Benson in short. Yardage fumbled! Oklahoma's got it! Rodney Poole is the guy that dove in. Benson doesn't give it up very often, but he fumbled it there. Benson put it on the ground three times last week. Take a look. Ingram made the hit. Yeah, right there. This is the best field position by far for Oklahoma. He didn't lose those fumbles last week against Baylor, but he fumbled and got them back. This is a thing that is that that haunted Texas last year. Six turnovers they gave away against Oklahoma. Adrian Peterson's back in at the 24-yard line. Golden opportunity for the Sooners with a fumble recovery. The toss is to Peterson. His wide receivers, his blockers, through the hole and out of bounds. But he got another 13. Just keep the pressure on Oklahoma. Keeping the pressure on, or should I say, keeping Peterson off. He's the guy that's doing the damage. Career high for Adrian Peterson. A lot of those folks that are all painted in crimson haven't even had a chance to meet the kid yet. Another great run down to the 11-yard line. I think I'd just keep feeding the horse. Why not? You got single coverage out here on the top. Peterson hitting the backfield this time, and it's Derek Johnson. Yeah. You don't want to go anywhere near Derek Johnson. In fact, you want to run away from him, and you can't even do that sometimes. Yeah. And that's what they tried to do there, and he slid through to make the stop. Cedric Benson on the sideline knows there'll be another chance, but will this cost his team a field goal or a touchdown? Or maybe nothing if the Texas defense can clamp down again. 187 yards. 
which is about what Cedric Benson's been rushing for the last three weeks. Only this time it's Peterson with the big numbers. White, plenty of time. Throws in the middle, incomplete. Look out. Is that picked off by Johnson? May have. Derek Johnson's got the ball. And he's out of bounds. Texas gets it back. I think it deflected off of a defensive back up into the air. We'll take a look and see. It skipped off Brandon Jones, I think. Right there, still in the air. Oh, oh that no, hit the no, ground. No. That hit the ground. That hit the ground. That hit the ground. Michael Huff's the one that tried to just scoop it off the turf. Johnson took it out of midair, but the ball hit the ground before Huff got his hands under it. See, this is where the NFL replay, or the, even the Big Ten replay, would straighten that out. As it is, Texas gets a huge break to get the ball. Benson hit in the backfield. But this is the 99th running of the uh, Red River shootout, and uh, they haven't had replay in any of those, and they, they got along without it. Ain't going to start now. <laughs> <laughs> we did all right without it, and we're going to continue on with it. Now, hopefully, something like that won't impact the outcome of the game. Exactly. I mean, you can overcome uh, mistakes by officials uh, early in the game, but if that's at the very end of the game, and it caused a uh, outcome of the game to be altered, that's when you want to correct it. Second down, 11, Texas. Vince Young in the shotgun again. Steps up and throws. This time he completes it out to Nate Jones. And Nate Jones got about nine. It'll bring up third down, a long one coming up. Wednesday on ABC, check out the show that's being called the best new drama on TV. An all-new Lost, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Got an idea. We're never going to find out what Kate did wrong to have those handcuffs on. I'm waiting to find out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they they keep going back and teasing you yeah. a little bit. You know, third down, a huge one here. Benson, he got it. Got about two off the right side. It looked like one of those old rugby scrums. You uh -huh. know, there was 22 guys lined up within five yards of each other. Brad, the fans are still upset about that call, and all it's done is get them more emotionally involved in the game. They're yep. going to make it hard for Young to hear anything going on right now. Well, maybe they ought to do a little play action and throw deep because uh, they ain't going to matriculate down the field. <laughs> There's Benson trying to do that, and he does for about five across the 40 to the 41, holding on to that football. Of course, what Swanley was talking about is on the right side as we view the 50 is where the crimson line is drawn and Texas is still on that end of the field and if you've never been here it's a sight to see because right down the 50 yard line is where burnt orange can... and crimson get separated yeah, right down all this is crimson and all that is burnt orange and we burnt the third quarter up it's still a game that could be decided by one play Bevo looking on looks pretty interesting. <laughs> Six nothing. At least they didn't shoot Bebo. <laughs> our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. For four years, Oklahoma has had Texas number. Four straight victories in the Red River shootout have put them in the national spotlight and put disappointment in the hands of Mac Brown and his Longhorns. Can Texas change it all in the next 15 minutes? It's going to take another comeback because heading into the fourth, they trail 6-0. Bob Stoops trying to win his fifth straight over the Longhorns. A lot of zeros up there for Texas. They have not scored yet. But they've got the ball as we start the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew at the State Fair of Texas in the Cotton Bowl. 99th running of the Red River shootout, and here's... Vince Young running down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. That's what he can do so well. And after 23 yards, it took number 23 to knock him out of bounds. It's a two-man offense. It's Benson and it's Young. He fakes the Benson. Gets a nice block there from Stuttered. 
And he just outruns everybody but the last guy, Poole. Vince Young, 51 yards on the ground, better than he's thrown. He has only 40 in the air. Now it's Cedric Benson up the middle. And Benson got two, maybe three. Jonathan Jackson made the stop. The thing you have to remember on, on offense, neither offense has played well except for Adrian Peterson, especially Texas here. They haven't scored. But all they need, the only thought is, hey, we score one time, we're ahead. That's right. I don't matter what we've done up to this point, going against a good defense, if we score, we're in the lead in this ballgame. Bob said it's a two-man show between Young and Benson. They have 159 of the Longhorns, 190 yards. Snap was a little low. He got the handoff to Benson, but that play was blown up after about a two-yard pickup as we head to New York. I don't believe plays Ohio State or Purdue. Oh. Wisconsin might be the only team left between them, and you know what? They're if hot. they win that game. Minnesota's hot. Third and six. Young had a man wide open, and the play's whistled dead. And there apparently was a timeout taken before that snap, but it was so noisy we didn't hear the whistle. So we'll take the timeout. That leaves Texas with only one. Vince Young will talk it over on the sideline with 13.34 to play. Titans and the Packers Monday night here. A battle of Titans, if you will. The Sooners ranked second. The Longhorns ranked fifth. So far today, Texas 4 of 11 on their third down conversions. And boy, if they ever needed one, this would be the spot they'd want to pick. And this may be a, a situation where they go for it on fourth down if they didn't pick up the first down here. Matthews, the fullback, is the single setback. Two tight ends. And that's Thomas, one of them, in motion. On third down, a long six. Young, quick drop. Now he's in trouble. Down he goes. And you to get you, and he got him. He's going to get you, and he got him. And that probably takes him out of field goal range. It will. Third down. The coverage was there. It made him pull it up, pull it up, and then the, the rush got him. Perkins there with the jump that you saw kind of prevented Young from pulling the trigger, and it forces another McGee punt. Boy, did he hit this a mile in the air. Straight up the shoot. But it won't quite stay out of the end zone for him. He kicked that baby almost as high as the Ferris wheel here at the State Fair of Texas. But it hit the end zone. And so Oklahoma will work again. There's the Ferris wheel. Thanks, guys. On the 20-yard line. Oklahoma. Four straight victories in this matchup. A couple of games that went over 60. Quentin Griffin going in, one of his touchdowns, one of many on the day for him. A great play. Sims back to throw. Lehman off the deflection for the touchdown in a close game. And Oklahoma by 11 over Texas. And then the route was on last year early and often. Jonathan Jackson interception return for a touchdown, part of a 65-point barrage. Here, it's only 6-0 Oklahoma. But Texas is going to... Be running out of chances pretty soon. Wow, flag flew in from about 30 yards away from the play as Derek Johnson made the tackle. That's as far as you can throw a flag. That is usually a little uh, extracurricular activity, yeah. Face mask after the play. Big penalty there. These two teams weren't always ranked this highly when they came in to play this game Brad right. as you well know back in the 90s I mean the this game was played and nobody even cared about it uh -huh. but the last three I think three of the last four or five years these two teams have been ranked in the top five in the country well three of the last four years for the Longhorns four years in a row for the Sooners coming in with a perfect mark for the top five ranking 27th time in the series history they've both been undefeated coming into the game Adrian Peterson spin move lost the football but it's out of bounds and he's out to about the 38 yard line I think his leg is hurting a little bit he's just not as quick as he was a little bit earlier in the game the Nissan drive summary second half possessions 
better field position in this half for Oklahoma. And they've only gotten three points out of it, though. Well, they got the ball on the on Texas's 24-yard line, and then the interception that was not an interception, really. They didn't score on that on that drive. Peterson stays in there on first down from the 38. He'll get the call. Boy, hit again hard in the back. Aaron Harris, another good-looking linebacker, and what a compliment he is to Derek Johnson. And when Johnson came here out of Waco, it seemed like more and more of the Texas linebackers, the, the good ones, like number two, Aaron Harris, said, you know what, I want to go where he is because he's pretty good. Uh-huh. And they're both pretty good. Now they've had some good they've had some good defensive players out of the state of Texas. Time permitting. A whole ton of them. Time permitting, stick around for the thrifty Carmel postgame report. John, Craig, and Aaron will have scores and highlights from around the country. Those guys headed for higher ground. I don't see him sitting out there anymore. That rain got to him. Second down to 10. Play action. Jason White trying to direct traffic and throws a strike to the far side to Bradley. First down, Oklahoma. Beg your pardon, it's Travis Wilson, number four. Get the quarterback outside the pocket. The route you see on the outside just goes down and breaks to the outside, slips a little bit. But he has time for all this because he's outside the pocket. Travis Wilson's third catch of the day. Good for 34 yards. Well, it took a long time for the Heisman winner to go over 100 yards. Two interceptions, no touchdowns today in the game, running or passing. And again, one of those interceptions should not have been. Here's that toss again. Peterson's got one man on the corner, and he slips and goes down, upset with himself. Cedric Griffin, though, squared up, did a nice job of keeping his eyes on number 28's belly button, and he slipped going down. And they've tried this play several times. It'll fake one way, and it'll pitch. Again, it's designed to hold the linebackers, and Griffin out there does his job. Down goes Peterson, but not before a 200-yard day in his first-ever matchup with Texas. Almost lost the handle, now broke the tackle. Down the sideline and out of bounds, but not before he gets to the 27-yard line. I take back what I said about his leg bothering him. <laughs> uh, you know, he's fast, he's strong, and he's as slippery as a brook trout. I mean, if this guy was a fifth-year senior, we would say he is dominating this game, but this guy is just a true freshman. And, it, and it, we watch him, the way he moves, enjoying his balance and strength. He's so young, he's still got things to learn. And one of the great things about having a back like this and a good solid attack late in the close ball game is that you control the clock. And he's got to do that by staying in bounds a little bit more. 219 yards. He gets a breather. Kewan Jones will get the carry this time. Kewan runs into Michael Huff after a pickup of two or so. You know, the other thing about Peterson is that uh, he breaks so many tackles. He doesn't come down with, with the first guy. And, and again, I mentioned the guys up front blocking for him. Sims, Carter, and Brown, Jamal Brown, are all fifth-year seniors. Well, Carter's a fourth-year senior. Joseph, the right guard, and Shashan are a fourth-year player. So they've all started a ton of games in that offensive line. Second down and eight. That ball is right inside the Longhorn 25. Oklahoma leads 6-0. Stretch play to Keewan Jones. Only about a yard more. Derek Johnson, another tackle. And we are down near the nine-minute mark remaining in the ballgame. 6-0. You know, if that kid continues to play like this and he plays in Norman for four years, you got to wonder if he doesn't have the talent to be one of the all-time greats. And I start thinking, I think the all-time leading rusher in both Division One and 1A is Adrian Peterson from Georgia Southern. How about that if he could pass a guy with the same name? That'd be good. And do very good. He hangs around long enough. <laughs> That's what I was alluding to. Third and six. Got single coverage at the top of the screen. White, quick slant. Got him complete. First down at the 15. It's Will Peoples. 
Hey, Bob and Brad, one of the big differences in this ball game between Oklahoma and Texas has been on plays just like this. Oklahoma's wide receivers recognize the blitz and are running much better routes, getting in position, allowing Jason White and all of his experience when he reads that blitz, he knows who he should go to, and that receiver is doing a tremendous job of getting open for that short catch, keeping the drive alive, something the Texas receivers have not done all day. First down at the 15, Peterson is back in. He'll get the call. Left side, Peterson inside the 10, still on his feet. Knocked out of bounds inside the 7. Jason White feverishly is trying to fix the shoelace on his right cleat. He looked at the referee, Hal Dowden, earlier as if say, I need a little help here. This thing's broken. And the ref looked at him and said, I'm sorry, son. You don't call a timeout. You're going to have to go barefoot. Yeah. And he ran that last play with his shoestring dangling, and he had to reach for Peterson. He almost tripped getting it there. <laughs> Kiwan Jones comes back in. Runnels, the fullback, is in front of him. Second down in a yard. Kiwan Jones left side. Oklahoma touchdown. He got him there, and the other one got him in. A luxury is it to have two guys that get along and complement each other so well. One a junior and the sensational freshman who got him close and Kiwan Jones got him in. How about Oklahoma with a running game? Timeout taken. Oklahoma will try the extra point when we come back. Right now with just over eight minutes left, they lead 12-0. They held up that sign next to Lynn Swan in the pregame, and now they can hold it higher. An 80-yard march by Oklahoma in 11 plays. Took 4.38 off the clock. Peterson did a lot of the work. Kewan Jones did the last six yards. And Oklahoma's going to go for two. To try to make it a 14-0 game. Now, as Bob Stoops would say, why not? Because... Well, there's one out, I guess. Nope. Clayton made the catch. It's not going to hurt you if you don't make it. No. Michael Huff made a nice tackle again. And he has played really well for that defense of the Longhorns. ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by Nissan. Everything we touch, we shift. And everything we shift, we try to make better. Day after tomorrow, own the biggest event in 10,000 years on DVD on Tuesday. The Hartford Mutual Funds, official corporate partner of the NCAA. And AOL for Broadband, proud sponsor of our first attempt. With Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler. This is the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. 75,500 split right down the middle looking on in a game that still the outcome has not been determined. But now Texas knows what it needs. They need two scores in eight minutes, wow. or they will lose for the fifth straight time to the Sooners. And if you're wondering if, if, if Texas offensively couldn't score and hasn't gotten close for three and a half quarters, how are they going to score two touchdowns in the last eight minutes? Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Looking down that Sooner sideline, holding their helmets aloft, sensing another victory. High short kick. Taken by Texas on a fair catch. That was Matthews, the fullback. And that's where Texas will work from. Don't forget, second half of our showdown Saturday on ABC College Football. You'll either see Cal versus number one USC, Wisconsin and Ohio State, big game in the Big Ten, Georgia Tech, Maryland, or Oklahoma State and Colorado. Check local listings for the game in your area. And if it's at Wisconsin, Ohio State, Barry Alvarez team with Anthony Davis back is undefeated and they don't give up much of anything defensively. But of course Ohio State will be trying to rebound from their upset loss to Northwestern. So that'll be a dandy right behind us. Vince Young out in the flat slipping down is Cedric Benson. 
Is there a uh, shifting in the Big Ten of the powers? Michigan might go down today. Ohio State already one loss to Northwestern. You've got Wisconsin. You've got Minnesota. Purdue. And old Purdue. Yep. And Michigan is trailing the last time Sam gave us an update 24 to 17. It could be one of the huge wins ever for the Gophers under Glenn Mason. They had him on the ropes last year and let him off on a huge comeback in the second half. We'll see if they can hold on now again today. Second down and low. Young side arms it out complete but immediately put down at the 32 yard line is Tony Jeffrey. Yeah see that's what that's what Texas is not doing defensively. When Oklahoma completes those short passes, Texas is missing the tackles. But Anya, Anya Naget, Nagetcha yeah. comes up and makes the play. Right here. There's Anya Nagetcha. Anya Nagetcha. And he got him again. You know what? What Texas was hoping for was a little catch and a run. Yeah. Not so. Tony Jeffrey, I think, a little shaken up on that play after that hit. He's not in there right now. Third down and six. Texas needs this one badly. Young on the roll. Now he's going to keep it. Puts his head down and drives for a first down near the 40. Eight-yard run for Vince Young. All right, they got to keep. Uh, they got you know time is of a little bit of an essence here. Yep. They need two touchdowns. Pretty soon you just got to wonder, if just for the sake of throwing deep. And there you see Jeffrey. They're working on his shoulder after he took that lick. If Texas is to get deep, maybe it's got to be David Thomas, the tight end. Somebody's got to get down the field pretty soon. Young going deep down the middle and broken up. It was Skate, the intended receiver. Both tight ends went deep, yeah. but Rodney Poole has been all over the place today. Poole, who led this team in interceptions, was seven a year ago. And he's coming off a two interception performance last week as the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. And he's been around the ball a lot today. Well, he has. In fact, he has nine interceptions his last 18 games, going back to last year. There goes Scaife, the tight end. Trying to get it right down the middle. Close. It's a good effort by Poole to go up for the ball where the tight end didn't. Second and 10. 6.23 to play. Texas needs a touchdown in a hurry. Young fakes it to Benson, keeps it himself, and Rufus Alexander's got him all tied up. Rufus Alexander injured in the spring game of 03, didn't make it back until halfway through last year. And now out there is a starter on the outside, and he's had some big plays today. Now it's third down and 10. Time is running out on the Longhorns. Under six to play. I know they don't want to play two down territory from their own 39, but they got to get one here pretty soon. Down the sideline. Great leaping catch by Lima Sweet. First down, Longhorns. The 6'5 freshman went up and got it over Antonio Perkins. The red shirt freshman, I think that's his first catch today. And they like this kid. Look how big he is. 6'5 just goes up over Perkins. Longest play of the day for the Longhorns right there. To the 35 of OU. This kid's got the kind of size Roy Williams had when he was here. Isn't he wearing his uh, number? Number four? Young waits, fires deep. Out there, broken up. Would have been a touchdown. Couldn't hold it. Nick Jones could have been up by Rodney Poole again. Could have caught it. Should have made the play. Just couldn't make it. Let's get another update. Sam Ryan in New York. Sam Maroney. So far today. Longhorns have been sick of Adrian Peterson. Vince Young's in trouble. Fumble. It looked like he tried to lateral to a, somebody in white, and it was an offensive lineman. Sooners have it. Yeah, Injured player on the field. I think Clint Ingram came up with the fumble. Perkins comes flying in, flushes Young. There goes the ball. And then there's a mad scramble out. 
And right about there is where it's recovered. Perkins is the guy that's shaken up on the play on the bottom of that pile right there. Yeah, he didn't. Young never sees Perkins. He hasn't seen that blitzer from the right side all day long. And that's the one that started all the trouble. Well, Vince Young not having the day he'd hoped for. That's for sure. And who knows, that might be the last chance that he'll get the football. And it might be the last chance for Texas to snap the losing streak against Oklahoma. With Perkins down, we'll take a break. Just under five minutes left in the ballgame. I'm sure a lot of Oklahoma fans are blue looking at Antonio Perkins as we welcome you back to the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. They work on the starting cornerback and punt return man. Texas hasn't been shut out in 24 years. That was against Baylor in November of 80. They're shut out right now with 458 remaining in the ballgame. Kewan Jones on a toss sweep. Kewan Jones trying to hurdle one of his own blockers and tripped himself up. But he still got out to about the 47-yard line. And now Kewan a little bit gimpy. Checking his leg as he goes back to the huddle. Don't forget time permitting, John Craig and Aaron with a thrifty car rental postgame report. We'll have all the scores in the highlights from around the country. And they might have a final from that Big Ten game by the time we're done for you. About three and a half minutes left of the Minnesota Michigan game. Here, four minutes, 20 seconds remaining. And Oklahoma in front 12 to nothing. Jones again. And again, he's hit. This time by Aaron Ross. Knocked him off his pins as he dives out to the 49 yard line. And the rain is starting to come down again. It's been a battle. And, uh, you know, Bob Stoops said. Coming in, we expect a tough bit. This this guy's been here, what? This is his sixth year. Yep. And he's been in the national championship game twice in those six years. In fact, he was in, he won the championship his second year here. In I think I think they got a shot at getting back to that game again. I think they've got the offense, the special teams are there, and the defense has certainly played very well here today. Well, he thinks they got a shot to get there. I'll tell you that much. He told us as much. Timeout with 332. Remaining, that's what they'd like to play for. Still a lot of season left, but this would be a huge hurdle. So far, they're jumping over Texas, 12-0. Back at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, 12-0. Sooners lead our Pacific Life game summary. Trey DeCarlo, the Sooners kicker, 22 and 26-yard field goals in this game. The Oklahoma defense has been superb, forcing three turnovers, making life rough for Vince Young and company. And then they have number 28. Is he the best to come down the pipe in a while? He might be. The freshman sensation, 228 yards rushing. And it's Oklahoma leading 12 to nothing. They didn't even need the Heisman Trophy winner. Nope. He's in the shotgun right now on a third down and four. Rolls to his left. Throws. Intercepted. Nope. Dropped. High up in the air was Cedric Griffin, but the ball hit the ground, I guess, on the way down. Boy, that would have been just what the doctor ordered for Texas to try to do something here. As a big defensive play there. Who knocked it up? Allen? Yeah, Hall, 49. Well, they're going to have to punt it anyway. He only ran about a minute and a half off the clock that time, did the Sooners, before Ferguson has to put it away. Aaron Ross waiting on the other end. A special teams gem would be something that could possibly get Texas back in the ball game because time is not on their side. 3.30, 3.27 actually left. And Ferguson drops it inside the 10, and Mark Bradley's down there to cover it. Let's check in with Lynn. Well, Bob and Brad, several years ago, I was in the Orange Bowl when Oklahoma won that first national championship with Bob Stoops, and he won this trophy. Now, this is the ADT National Championship trophy, and once again, as you can see by the men in orange, it'll be back at the Orange Bowl. Now, I also watched Oklahoma play LSU last year where they didn't win the national championship. What's the difference between last year and now? Intensity. 
These guys have a defense now that brings it from beginning to end and an offensive line that I think is 200 percent better than they were last year Bob and Brett. Our buddies from the Orange Bowl standing down there flanking that trophy. Here's Cedric Benson. Broke the tackle, got across the 20 and a first down after the 21 yard line. Those guys from the Orange Bowl look good, don't they? They do. They look good in those jackets. You got one of those. Yes, sir. We're looking forward to it, too. I know all of Miami and South Florida is looking forward to hosting the national championship game again this year. Vince Young out of the shotgun without a huddle. First down. Zips it down the middle, incomplete. Intended for Brian Carter as wide receiver. And uh, wide receivers and Vince Young really have not been much of a hookup today. No, they have not. That sidearm motion, I don't know if they're ever going to try and straighten him out or not, but uh, that's the way he likes to throw it. Almost sometimes when he throws it, it's almost like he is uh, decelerating some when he throws it. Texas hasn't been shut out in 24 years. Flag flies in with 2.55 left. Illegal substitution. Substitution in practice on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still saw you down. It looks like right now, unless something changed dramatically, that Mac Brown and Texas will lose for a fifth straight year to Oklahoma. Yeah, it's been a tough week for him. Everybody asks the question, no matter how successful he has been, they always say this is a critical game, and, and that's a bunch of bull. I mean, the previous 14 years before Mac Brown's arrival, the three coaches only twice did Unit Texas win nine or more games. With Mac Brown, they've won nine or more every year. And they've won 10 or 11 the last three years. So to say that they we're going to get rid of Mac Brown if he doesn't beat beat Oklahoma. Oh, that's crazy. The bottom line is Oklahoma has been pretty good yeah. the last five or six years. You know what? The Longhorns are the fourth winningest team in the country in the last four years. Oklahoma is the winningest team in the country in the last four years. Had they not beaten Texas, those two would be flip flop. Yes. Just give both teams credit, and both coaches are at the top of their game. Long pass down the sideline, incomplete, intended for Swede again. They got away with that on the last possession. Not this time. There's been a lot of coaches that have had trouble with main opponents, like Tom Osborne did for a while with Barry Switzer in Oklahoma. Like Phil Fulmer did along the way. Well, he won a championship. He had trouble with Steve Spurrier. So sometimes you just have to survive it and keep pushing forward. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, the, the Georgia Florida rivalry. Georgia's won about one of the last 16 of those babies. Yes, yeah, Florida's <laughs> won like 12 of the last 13. Young in trouble. Comes out with it and runs, but he's short of the first down. And the Sooner Nation now knows. There aren't many games like this anymore, Brad, where you play it on a neutral site. I think, like you mentioned, Florida and Georgia play in Jacksonville. And I think the only other neutral site is Army and Navy. All right. You know, UCLA and USC used to play in the Coliseum where you'd split the crowd. But, but I think there's only three venues now where they split the crowd. And the tradition is just, it's just, it's just great. The environment here in Dallas, the Cotton Bowl. State Fair, everything. Just on our arrival in here at about 8.15 local time this morning, it was already the circus atmosphere with a lot of thousands and thousands of people already here at the fair. There's Peterson running for his life. It's going to lose some of his career high as they run him out of bounds. He'll lose some yardage. Well, but you know, Adrian Peterson, we mentioned earlier, heavy recruiting battle between Texas and Oklahoma for his services and the freshman from Palestine Texas said that he chose Norman over Austin because OU develops its players and competes for championships and Texas doesn't well I don't know about that but yeah. how does he know that I don't know that's, that's his comment though it's an 18 year old high school senior saying that how does he know but because one of those players from Oklahoma told him probably. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you just saw the car Texas can't hold him 
So it looks like in this game of Texas Hold'em that the Sooners have not only seen the flop, but they've got the river card for the fifth straight year again. And they've got two aces in the hole named Peterson and Jones. And Oklahoma did what they had to do. Bob Stoops and his staff just came in. They shut out Texas. They knew what they had to do. They knew they had to stop the run. Stop Benson, and they did. Stop uh, Vince Young, and they did. They knew it wouldn't be easy to score points. They just took them whatever way they got them. Wasn't pretty, but they won the ball game. And it's step one of showdown Saturday. You see the rest of the games you'll be seeing following us. Kewan Jones almost snapped it into the secondary. As we work down near a minute and a half, Oklahoma's schedule. You start looking ahead now, and this one they're going to win. Kansas State's never easy to play in Manhattan. That Oklahoma State matchup again at Halloween looms pretty large. Now they have to go uh, what at Oklahoma State, at Kansas State, and at A&M. So they're going to be five and zero again. They don't play Missouri, and they don't play Colorado. Remember, the only team that beat top-ranked USC last year is the team they meet in the second game of our doubleheader today as well, and that's highly ranked Cal. And if Cal could pull the trick two years in a row, the team you're looking at right here would be the number one team in the country on Monday morning. But that's a lot of football between then and now. But this unit is a pretty good outfit again. They've got the makings, the defense, the ground game and that guy is head coach certainly the coaching yeah he's, he's always done a great job the last five six years here he's got Bo Pelini now as a, one of his defensive coordinators along with Brent Venables Chuck Long his offensive coordinator does a always does a good job there's Bo Bo came over from Nebraska Brent Brent Venables was co coordinator with Mike Stoops of course Mike's a head coach now at Arizona and he's improved that program already Fourth down and inches. This to sew up the ball game. And it will. Pewan Jones. So Texas is going to fall to four and one. And here's what they have coming up. Missouri's tough. Texas Tech, that's an annual battle. And you know you're going to see the football in the air a hundred times. Oklahoma State and Texas A&M on ABC. And that Thanksgiving weekend to wrap it up. But this one will be the one probably that will keep them out of Kansas City and the Big 12 championship. So for the Sooners and their fans, the greatest play in sports coming up. A kneel down by Jason White. Big play in the big house, we understand. Let's check in with Here we're down to the final play of the ball game. And for the fifth straight year, It'll be Oklahoma, a winner over Texas in a hard-fought defensive struggle. A couple of field goals, finally a touchdown for Oklahoma. And now the Sooner Nation celebrates in the Cotton Bowl. The last year, there was close to a fight before the game, and now I think you see that these two teams who have been battling for over three hours have the mutual respect for each other but they get to plant the OU flag one more time let's check in with Lynn thank you Brad coach you said before this game started you'd know a few more things about your football team after this game would you learn uh, we, we were you know we have some character uh, we don't mind being in tight games I think our defense is maybe a little better than people wanted to give them credit for and uh, and I just still love the attitude we're running the ball with and uh, you know, so it's uh, really appreciate our young our players and uh, coaches. They, they, our assistants did a great job. Your defense has always played extremely well. But coming into this ball game, people anticipated Texas might have all kinds of blitzes. Excuse me, your offense is playing well. Texas might have all kinds of blitzes. They might threat you. Do you feel like you saw a whole a whole lot that you didn't expect? Well, you know, we see about everything, and, and our offense goes against our defense all spring, all two days. We blitz about every way you can blitz. So they're they're pretty used to it, really. 32 carries, 225 yards for two freshmen 
in the Red River shootout. That's a phenomenal performance. He's a great young man with a great attitude. He's only going to get better, and, and, uh, and I know he appreciates those guys up front that were doing the work, too. Offensive line did a great job. You didn't start him. You wanted to bring him along carefully. How do you continue to use this man with also Juwan Jones in your backfield? Well, we're just, you know, like we did today, we're going to keep giving him the ball as long as we're able to run it and make people deal with it. And, uh, and I'm sure, again, we'll have better days growing, uh, you know, that, that we've shown it before. So uh, it's a solid team, great group of kids we get to work with. Coach, I know it's a win. At the end of the day, it's a win. But five consecutive wins against Texas in this game, that's huge. You know, I never look at it that way, Lynn. I take them one at a time, you know. It, it, nothing matters but this one, really. You know, each season it's a, it's its own entity, its own game, and that's kind of how I view them. So uh, we've had a good, some good fortune with the good run here. Texas is a good team. Really played, uh, had a heck of a game today, and so, uh, you know, we respect them as well. Coach, as always, All right, a pleasure well, to talk to appreciate you. Appreciate it. A lot better today than last time. <laughs> <laughs> that was leaving the field in the BCS title game last year. That's what Coach Stoops is alluding to. The Big 12 South standings now look like this. Oklahoma top the heap, perfect at 5-0, and oh, still the number two team in the country, and maybe even higher should Cal upset USC today. Texas falls to 4-1 and 1-1. One and one and one in conference play. So as Bob Stoops says, this is a stepping stone first to the Big 12 championship and then the national championship And today's Chevrolet players of the game. Number 28, the kid whose nickname is A.D. because he can run all day. Did he ever? Derek Johnson did his best to stop him. He led the Longhorns in tackles, but it wasn't enough. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. A star is born on the Norman campus, and he did it in style at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. The 99th Red River shootout goes to the Oklahoma Sooners. Five straight wins. They win it 12-0. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Dallas. Once again, our final score, Oklahoma 12, Texas nothing. First time Texas has been shut out in 24 years. Now let's head out to the State Fair of Texas to our buddies, John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. Fellas. Brad, thanks a lot. So a 12 to nothing win makes it five consecutive years, as you heard Brad say. Last time that happened was almost 20 years ago. But here's a question. USC faces Cal coming up. Some of you will see that here on ABC. Is USC the best team, or did we just watch the best well, team? Well, you know, as an AP voter, which I am, there are 15 first-place votes out there for Oklahoma right now. I'm one of those voters who has Oklahoma at number one. I assume their defense was as good as it was, but what I didn't realize was how good Adrian Peterson was against a very good Texas defense today. What a different story it was this year Oklahoma running the ball being able to establish the line of scrimmage those guys absolutely wore the Texas defense out Derek Johnson great linebacker flying over the place but he was not enough to get it done Oklahoma wore those boys out you mentioned Adrian Peterson this guy had a game like you dream about whether you're a senior or a sophomore junior no matter what you don't think about this as a freshman though he came out running they got the ball to him over 200 yards rushing for Adrian Peterson and, and he broke tackles this wasn't like he was running free and clear Texas defense had a Good strategy, but Peterson broke tackles, and that was the key in this deal. It wasn't like he had freebies. I mean, this was breaking and running hard. That set the tempo for the rest of those big guys up front. I love it. As an offensive lineman, you kill to block for a back like that. He makes it fun to play offensive line. He is awesome. Do you remember which one of us picked Texas to win this game? Yeah, I think he said Texas. I said it. it was with an F. With an F. With an F. In a moment. <laughs>